as we can. Good evening and welcome to the December 16th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the December 16th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. If uh, everyone could please Whoops. remain uh, oh, yes. standing um, for a moment of silence in memory of the uh, passing of uh, Vic Lassard. Thank you. I would like to make a couple of comments before we get started on the uh, agenda. Um, as most already know, Vic Lassard passed away last week. Um, I think he'll be missed by all. Uh, Vic served the town in a number of roles over the roles over the years. He was elected to the Municipal Budget Committee in 1972. He was a member of the Board of Selectmen, first elected in 1973. He served five terms. He was a member of the Planning Board beginning in 1973. He served three terms. He's currently was a member of the Leased Land Real Estate Commission. Vic served eight terms as a trustee of the trust funds beginning in 1989, and Vic was the current chairman of the zoning board to which he was first elected in 1991. He served eight terms on the zoning board. Um, a number of people, including some of my fellow board members, have suggested that the 2013 town report be dedicated to Vic. Um, do we have a consensus among the selectmen of that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> First item on the agenda is a public hearing under RSA 31,95B, Roman numeral 3, small a, to apply for a $400,000 2013 Hurricane Sandy Coastal Resiliency Competitive Grant application for the purpose of decommissioning the old Mill Pond Dam and replacement of the High Street culverts. Um, Keith, uh, Fred, would you like to speak to that, Mark? So this is a fantastic opportunity for the town. This is a grant pro uh, program that was um, um, was told to me from the uh, Dam Bureau officials that just came about. And uh, the grant is a 75% grant, federal grant, 25% local match. Uh, and this would be used for decommissioning the Old Mill Pond uh, Dam, as well as replacing the culvert on uh, High Street, the culvert just down river of the dam. I initially had estimated the project to, um, well, we know that the engineers had estimated $400,000 for the decommission of the dam. I, my early estimate for replacing the culvert is $125,000, but as I had mentioned to the board, I did uh, have a engineer that's done work for me do a, an evaluation of the culvert, and he just provided me with an updated estimate that is uh, $175,000, which would include placing the two culverts, uh, cylindrical culverts with one 3x3 uh, three three box culvert. And he has spoke to the state and they're in agreement that that would be fine as far as allowing for fish passage. So and that is on the high end. Uh, the range was from 145000 to 175000 but at this early on in the process, I think that we ought to plan on 175000 So I'd like to increase the authority for me to um, submit the grant application for $430,000. Um, it's a two-step process. There's the initial uh, process is the, the study and the design. Um, and then once you get that in they approve the study and design, then we would go into a construction phase and then we'd go for a subsequent grant. Um, so I just see this as a great opportunity for the town to save some money and I would ask for the authorization from the board to proceed with the, the, the grant process. <coughs> the grant is a very lengthy, complicated process. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to be participating in a, they call it a webinar. Uh, that they're hosting from two to four, and I had to sign up for, and it's uh, an instructional, um, you know, seminar on how to apply for this grant. And one of the things they ask you at the very get-go when you go through the process, and of course it's all on the computer, is have you been authorized to apply for the grant? So 
even though the grant will probably take me two to three weeks to complete, right off the bat they ask if I've been if I'm, you know, authorized. So that's why I'm asking for the authorization to initiate this process. Keith, can I um, just confirm? You mentioned a an amount of, of roughly four hundred and thirty thousand dollars, and I'm assuming based on the numbers you just thrown out that that represents seventy five percent of the combination of four hundred thousand and one hundred and seventy five thousand. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any um, questions or comments uh, also from the board? We authorize and allow Keith to pursue the grant. We have a second on that. Sure. Okay, why don't we leave it at that and go out to public comment for before we actually take a vote um, on it. This is, in fact, a uh, public hearing. Okay. Um, would um, anyone from the public wish to comment on this? Okay, back to the board. I Any additional questions or comments on this? Yes, yeah, I do really quickly. Um, the culvert, would, in addition to turning into a box culvert for adequate fish transition, um, will the culvert be lowered? It, it will be sloped from the existing yeah. invert elevation right. so that the fish can get up into mm -hmm. it. Um, when I do say a box cover, we haven't got to the f that far in the design process. It may have an open bottom to it, but it will be definitely in a box shape. Okay as long as it is adequate yeah. to drain the area, oh, yeah. which is a problem now. Right. Which brings me to my second question. If we are authorizing you to go for the $430,000, which is 75% of the project, I would think it logical uh, for the board to go ahead with the warrant article uh, and put a single warrant article to cover both the uh, grist mill dam decommissioning and the culvert, uh, both of which are eligible for the 75% reimbursement from the government. I sort of throw that out to the board when we get to the Warren articles. I, I would comment on that suggestion. Um, as a matter of fact, Fred and Keith and I and Mark, Chris Jacobs, I think, had a meeting about a week ago and we did discuss that. My concern would be is, is that we are under a LOD letter of deficiency from DES where ultimately we have to address the grist mill dam <coughs> if we don't in the long run we run the risk of DES fines and so on and so forth. Um, as far as, as the culvert we are under no um, directive from DES or anyone else to do that. Um, I think given the grants at all, particularly at 75 percent or whatever, I think it's wise to go ahead with that. My concern would be if we combine them onto one Warren article and we have a Warren article with an amount which would be $575,000 on it, then I, th I think we hurt our chances. One could debate how much. We certainly don't help our chances of approval um, with the voters by going through with one. I don't see a downside in going through with with two separate articles, which is the way we stand um, at the moment. My culvert is desperately needed for drainage. That's I'm not, a very I'm not debating that. big problem area. I'm, I'm not debating that, Mary Louise. I'm, I'm just suggesting that I, I don't think we want to do anything given the letter of deficiency and the potential of fines to <coughs> um, hurt our, our, our chances of getting approval of, of the um, DM uh, decommissioning. So those are my comments. If in the absence of, of a motion to combine them onto two, um, I would say we continue with two separate articles um, the way we are structured right now. Two articles which happen to follow back to back on the warrant. Well, my motion was to authorize him to go ahead and right. pursue the grant for I both, and I plan on making a motion to combine the two articles. Okay, when that's we get fine. To the let's, let's, let's then take let's a vote yes. on the authorization of the grant. All in favor? Uh, are we close for questions? Oh, no. So okay, thank you. Uh, Director, good evening. Uh, could you please explain uh, to the public uh, what uh, decommissioning the old mill pond dam entails? Basically, it's to uh, have an open channel underneath, through the, through the existing dam and underneath the, um, in the old grist mill. We do have a preliminary design that the engineers did that they used to price this out. And it would be sort of like a, um, a concrete flume that would go through that area, still utilizing the existing dam, 
but just having an open flume that would not have any gates on it that would allow um, the you know water to continually go through and just never get to the point where you're damming it up. It's basically what we're talking about. Thank you. Mr. Welsh, could I have your input, please? I'd say the director is absolutely correct. Uh, the state's request is that we either spend the money to renovate the dam and bring it up to today's standard, or we in fact breach it, which is what the director is talking about, mm -hmm. by removing a portion of the rock that makes the dam directly behind the grist mill, so that the flow will go underneath the grist mill and continue across underneath <coughs> High Street and into Meadow Pond, and that breach would be reinforced with concrete to keep from the side embank to keep the side embankments from deteriorating and falling into the uh, into the channel. Great, thank you. And what does that do to the uh, standing water that's there now? And you had mentioned in, in prior public hearings about uh, the hydrological effect of wetlands up to the west. Uh, the existing water that's there now will disappear down to what would normally, what would have been the original brook. Mm -hmm. um, my concern in the past has <coughs> been that we have not done uh, an extensive analysis of the material that's deposited behind the dam. It's been there for hundreds of years. There's um, material silt that's come downstream that's deposited there. If that silt were to dry out sufficiently and be compacted sufficiently, uh, it would be difficult to move. However, depending upon the type of silt and its, its disposition regarding future flooding or, or high water, uh, it could be eroded and flushed down through the dam and into Meadow Pond. Mm. Do you think we've had sufficient liaison with the state in terms of agreements and, and pushing back on uh, deadlines and imminent uh, uh, discussion of fines and levy of fines against the taxpayers of Hampton? The state's been extremely cooperative, uh, but there is a deadline that they've set, uh, and we've tried to work through that deadline, and this warrant article is designed to meet that deadline. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Abstained. Um, motion passes 401 with uh, Sletman Bean abstaining. Mary Louise, you had another motion? No, I, I will when we get to Warren articles. So uh, did you want to? Waste time. I, I'm just oh. suggesting well, I'll keep this here should there be issues that come up. If you were going to make that motion, we were going oh, to have okay, a discussion. Great. It might be advantageous to do it. I, will I did not want to ask Keith to hang around until we hit that later in the meeting. He loves hanging yeah. around, though. So. Um, yes, yes I will so move that on the warrant we combine the um, article, two articles for the grist mill decommi dam decommissioning and the culvert and have them all in one article so the public, I think the public certainly will understand the intent. Does anybody wish to second that? I'll second it for discussion. We've, discussion. we've already discussed it. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's, there is a point that uh, Keith ought to answer in that regard, which is when we were talking about an earlier grant, the earlier grant we were talking about only applied to the culvert, but apparently this grant applies to both the dam and the, cul the culvert. No, no, the, the other one was moving the house. Oh. Okay. Th that was had nothing to do with the culvert. No, I, I thought there was... Uh, there was one form of grant that without the culvert, the grant wouldn't be available. Is well, that, that, that this is one? this one. That's this one. That's this one. But the 75% but the grant applies to both. As long as we do the culvert. As long right. as we do the culvert. If we don't do the culvert, we're not going to get any grant at all. Thank you. Right. I would add, the way we are structured now, the grant for the grist mill dam is in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars and there are no conditions in other words um, it is not conditioned um, in terms of the voters approving it on getting grants the way we are, we are structured with you looking confused read read the Warren article okay um, with the culvert the way that was structured and I think we may be modifying that article tonight to reflect the amounts that you've brought forward one hundred and seventy five thousand versus 125,000, the approval by the voters was conditioned on receiving essentially 50 percent in the way of grants. It actually had an absolute number of 62,500 does in the warrant article, which was based on 50 percent of the 125,000. 
Right. And, okay. and when we talked about it, I said a minimum of 50 percent. Right. Hoping that we'd get the 75. Right. But Understand. Yeah, but yeah. but it, it, as far as the voters approve, there's a real incentive for the voters to approve that um, culvert, okay, based on the fact is that they're only signing up for what will Now, be I presume that sixty-two thousand will rise to eighty-seven thousand, based on on the same percentage or whatever. In my opinion: we cannot afford to put those kind of contingencies on the grist mill dam because we have to do that. We simply want approval, and we want approval of four hundred thousand dollars. I believe that that if we up that amount to asking for approval of five hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. We affect our ability to get it approved. Nobody knows for sure. I'm, I'm simply expressing that opinion. Well, first of all, in the Article 15, as it's written now, on the grist mill decommissioning, dam decommissioning, there's no stipulation as to the amount, uh, no stipulation as to the 75 percent. This is just to accept the the uh, grants and funds as they may become available. So, a member of the public reading that isn't going to understand that we would be eligible for 75 percent just reading that. But we may not get the 75 percent is the well, point. Well, we will get the 75 percent. Oh, we will. Do that is not assured. That? that is in no way, shape, or form. I think you're, you're um, there is informed no and, and no misleading guarantee. to state that. Okay, we, but we are eligible for. We are, we are submitting we are and submitting hoping. an application. And hoping. And talk, talk. Okay. The last I heard from the state is only three in New Hampshire right now. I think we're okay. either one of the three or in addition that it looks like they're going to be applying for this. But if we piggyback, or if we have the culvert then as a separate article, th we are eligible to apply for an offsetting grant on that as well. Absolutely. Okay, great. then I'll withdraw the motion and Good. I, I okay. see where Happy we're to going. Hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. Well, I just want to make sure we know what we're doing. Okay. Okay. I think sometimes we don't. <laughs> I think we're all set and thank, thank you very, very much, much Keith. Keith. Okay. Next item on the agenda is a public hearing on amendments to the Entertainment Activities Ordinance. And I'm going to say a few words on that before we open it up to the public. <laughs> Noise generated by entertainment activities surfaced as a topical issue in 2011. The selectmen have had feedback from the police department that the enforcement of the existing ordinance was and is problematic. <laughs> the enforceability of the ordinance was exacerbated in 2012 when a petitioned Warren article was modified at the deliberative session, limiting the hours enforce of enforcement to a one-hour period from midnight to 1 a.m. The objective of the Warren article that we are discussing is to craft an enforceable ordinance that balances the interests of the businesses providing entertainment activities with the residents and other businesses in the area. Some of the highlights of the current draft, which was provided to the public last week, are as follows. In general, entertainment activities will continue to be allowed between noon and 1 a.m. Outside entertainment activities will be required to cease at 11 p.m. or sooner if appropriate. It has more to do with the, the, the neighborhoods. The decibel level measured on the A scale at the receiving property line is limited to a maximum of 75 dB before 11 p.m. and 65 dB max between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. Complaints to the police department may be made verbally or in writing. Complaints to the selectmen, which may lead to a hearing on the establishment's entertainment license, must be made in writing. It is not the intent of the town to proactively enforce these limits, but to respond to complaints. The police department will be equipped with appropriate measurement devices, and I agree with the comments Beach Commissioner Rage made last week. The root issue is about neighbors respecting and working with other neighbors. That working relationship exists most of the time. However, there is a public benefit to having an effective noise-related enforcement tool when that is not the case. I want to emphasize that the noise regulations being addressed by this Warren article only apply to noise generated by entertainment activities. It does not impact other sources such as motor vehicle noise, construction activities, and so on. Um, would any of the uh, my fellow board members like to make any comments before I throw it open to the public? I'll just make one comment, if, if I may. Uh, spent probably a couple of hours walking around the beach before I came to my position on the noise levels, 
and as with Deputy Chief Sawyer, and it was very uh, informative as to what the background was, what the noise level was in several establishments. So I feel very secure in my position of what I think the noise level should be. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I'll uh, reserve my comments post uh, the public. Let That's fine. Okay. I, I have one quick comment. I was listening to the precinct commissioner's most recent meeting, uh, there seems to be a little more of a feeling of a 10 o'clock shutdown rather than 11 o'clock shutdown of the noise at the beach. So I just want to keep. I just want to. I don't know where you got that, madam. You were sitting at that meeting. I was the meeting, but they were talking about various activities that automatically shut down, like the, <coughs> the shell shuts down somewhere around 9.30 or I so automatically. I They've done that for years. Yes. And I think the Broadway Cafe, if I'm not mistaken, shuts down somewhere in that neighborhood, if you guys can yeah. correct me back there from the village so. district. Pe pe people... Well, they, they reduced the noise considerably at that point. Can, can, can I clarify and then put it out to the... Can I clarify and then I'd like to put it out to the public? I, I watched that meeting as well. And my interpretation is certainly we have members out there who can clarify that if, if they wish to. My interpretation was not that the beach commissioners and some of the people attending their meeting were suggesting that either the outside entertainment be ceasing before 11, like 10, nor were they suggesting that the lower decibel level um, should kick in at 10 o'clock versus 11 o'clock. My interpretation of what I watched was they were saying that, that many of the entertainment activities, and I think the comments were specific to the shell, don't go beyond 10 as a practical matter, but I don't think they were suggesting that we change our no, tipping, tipping point, if you will, of, of 11 to 10 or whatever. That was my interpretation, but they're out there. So yeah. I'd like okay. to turn it over to the uh, public for comment at this point. Who would like to go first? <laughs> ah, there he <laughs> is. I think when someone in the audience had mentioned that time level, we yeah, were I remember hearing we, something we didn't we didn't we didn't mention that time oh, level. Okay. Mm -hmm. the, the the question I have for you is, you're saying at eleven o'clock is the end time for outside entertainment or the end time for a seventy-five decibel entertainment? We're s what we're saying, Chuck, is both. Okay, that eleven o'clock is a tipping a po tipping point, and it applies um, to two items. Okay. Um, it applies to outside entertainment ceasing at 11 o'clock and perhaps earlier there have been several entertainment licenses that we've approved in the last year where we've required that outside entertainment actually stop at 10 o'clock. Those were not on the beach on Ocean Boulevard. They were uptown in residential um, neighborhoods. The second thing is, is that also associated with 11 o'clock is that the required decibel level threshold that not to exceed or whatever drops at mm -hmm. 11 o'clock from 75 dB mm -hmm. up to 11, noon time to 11 to 65 dB from 11 o'clock on or 11 to 1 a.m. Yeah, so music from inside an establishment that doesn't have an outside entertainment, they can continue till 1 o'clock. Uh, right. So you can hear that music outside. Right. But again, at that point, the 11 to 1 for an establishment that doesn't meet a definition which I think is still a little dynamic in our Warren article definition of outside entertainment. But um, music that is inside between 11 and 1 would simply have to meet the criteria of, and uh, again, it's all in the context of a complaint. I, I don't think it's so the, if the if board's intent. So if someone is doing, has music that's louder and no one complains about it, it's not, but the it police is not the going to go the around. The, and the police so chief can certainly speak up if I'm saying something he doesn't agree with, but it's our intent to strictly approach this as a response to a complaint as opposed to proactively running around with, with meters looking uh, for... I just want to make sure you understood we never said 10 o'clock because yeah. okay. someone in the audience. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Someone else from the uh, public? Bob? <coughs> My only comment would be that if there were a complaint, and a response and a determination that there was a violation of the ordinance, mm -hmm. that the first violation be a warning <laughs> informationally and not a fine. Okay. I, I would respond to that. Um, just my, my own feelings on that is I, I don't particularly want to legislate that within the language of the ordinance, but I think what you just said is typically the way the PD 
approaches these kind of situations anyway. They're trying to work with people and address issues and solve problems as opposed to immediately on the first get-go come down with a, a sledgehammer or whatever. But Jamie, I don't know if you want to, that, okay. Anyone else from the public? Just as a, as a clarification for myself, um, if there's inside entertainment with speakers at the windows pointing outside, where does that fall? Is that considered outside entertainment, inside entertainment? One of the comments I made is I think we're still working on the definition of what is inside versus outside entertainment. Mm -hmm. There is a definition of, of outside. Mark and I have already had some discussions um, on that. Um, I think that's a good point. We'll take it into consideration in forming a, our opinion, but one comment I would make is is that if you've got speakers and they're at a window, the window's not closed and they're blaring outside, chances are you're you're probably gonna run afoul of the pretty good chance anyway of the seventy five or the sixty five D B level. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Noise is noise. Someone else. Al um, kind of following that same speakers at the window thing. If it's 11 o'clock for outside uh, entertainment, which I'm going to apply for, I guess I'm, I'm failing to see what the difference is. If I'm confident in being able to adhere to whatever, you know, whatever decibel level um, Chief Sullivan feels is, you know, the answer, I guess what's the difference of it being inside and outside if the noise reaching the other points are the same? Same thing with a speaker. If a speaker's in a window, it's going to point. The screen's not going to hold in noise. If I can figure out, because <coughs> I mean, I've talked to sound engineers and companies. I'd, it, if I can figure out a way to adhere to the decibel level, that's the law. If mm -hmm. I can obey the law, being outside, I don't understand why an automatic two-hour, you know, shutdown before. One o'clock is necessary if I can operate within the limits. Okay, I, I will. I will give you my comments. Okay. As a and chief, you, you can certainly respond mm -hmm. after those or before those if you like. Just jump in on one real quick. Okay. It, just to be clear, it's not a decibel level that the police department or the chief says. It's oh, no, what I the board and the public are determined. Okay. Just so we're clear. <laughs> 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 I, I, I will comment on your question. First of all, as a practical matter, I think that outside entertainment, based on the fact that it's not taking place within a structure which has the capability to contain and, and attenuate noise levels, is, as a practical matter, more apt to be a problem than something that, that is inside entertainment, okay? And I, and I think your establishment is a good example, Wally's Pub, where you took some major steps, I think it was in 2012, which based on the feedback that I've got, things that improved the, the capability of the, the, the structure to attenuate that noise um, caused a dramatic reduction in the level of complaints. So as a practical matter, number one, I think it's, it's um, we're much more likely to run into issues um, for the reasons I stated, um, with outside entertainment. Number two, when we make a rule within the ordinance that's very black and white, that you can have outside entertainment up to 11, and you can't after 11, it makes it very simple from an enforcement standpoint. Y you don't have the technicalities and, and, and everything else. Having said that, if, 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 if you read into our philosophy of basically only responding to complaints, okay, as opposed to proactively going around with, with the police department looking for trouble, if you were running an outside entertainment activity, okay, at, took a time, 11.15, and you had an acoustical guitar in there that wasn't even hitting the ambient um, noise level um, in the area of whatever, you know, location or whatever, if we're only enforcing it in the case of a complaint, my 
my take is you probably would not have complaints. And it's back to our original scenario of, of it being about neighbors respecting neighbors, neighbors working with neighbors, and simply an enforcement tool that there's a public benefit to when that doesn't take place. I understand. But some of us aren't lucky enough to have neighbors that you can work with. So if you don't, I mean, I feel like it's only fair to give that respected business a shot. Just, I mean, in to operate within the law the same as any other business would. I mean, there's not going to be, I mean, any kind of DJ type crazy thing after 11 would be louder. There's less people around. There's less things to, you know, mitigate the sound. But an acoustic guitar, like you said, I don't feel like is out of reason for after 11 o'clock on Ocean Boulevard during the summer on the beach. And that's the only time we'd be open. So okay. I'm just throwing it up there. Okay, thank you. Someone else from the public? Vincent Ricitti, the Sea Catch. Um, what you were just saying as far as neighbors working with neighbors. I've been there for 42 years. I've worked with my neighbors. I can honestly say that no one has ever complained about any uh, ent entertainment being too loud. I've also been considerate of all the neighbors around going back to the beginning of time that I, that I had started. Um, I probably was the first one on the beach to start with the entertainment during the afternoon and then at night. We used to have entertainment and have rock bands down in the pub, which is a, a reinforced concrete slab walls. Um, you could never hear anything on the outside. I've always been very considerate. Um, when I applied for the entertainment license, I specifically said that the entertainment would stop at midnight. I never sought to go to the one o'clock limit. And I still believe that. Many times uh, we'll stop, start cutting down at 11 o'clock. By 11.30 we're more or less done. And I don't feel that I should be penalized because of other issues on the beach. Never had a, a, a report uh, to the police department. Uh, never had any kind of complaint from the neighbors. Uh, Chuck at the Pelham, we've been together for 20 years next to each other. And I feel that that might be a little justly unfair to just say well, all entertainment stops at 11 o'clock. If anything, I've m been more considerate about my neighbors and about the town uh, than possibly um, anybody. So when you say that to be considerate of the neighbors and working together, what is it that you would like if one has already been doing that? An enforcement tool when that does not occur, and there have been times when it has not, it may not apply to you. Also, I, I would just point out that you, you mentioned the pub and the, the ability to contain the sound. You are aware that you can, um, should this pass and become the ordinance, you can still run your entertainment in that no, pub. No, we don't so do that anymore. We're, just, we're all done with the pub. But no my <laughs> point is, is, is inside entertainment, where you have the capability with the structure to contain it, you can still do that until 1 a.m. So you're proposing that at 11 o'clock everything stops on the no. outside? No. S strictly outside entertainment. That's what I'm saying. Strictly yeah. outside right. it stops. Mm. You're not making noise. You go to one o'clock. Generally speaking, with <coughs> the exception of outside, entertainment will continue along the same hours, noontime to 1 a.m. Yeah. On the outside? No. No. On generally. The yeah. Generally. Outside will cease at 11 o'clock. So you're not taking into consideration anything as far as any uh, buddy complaining through the years or we've run a good I, tight I ship? Think, I think our approach of enforcement being only in response to a complaint mm. as opposed to running around and proactively <coughs> trying to look for trouble with meters considers yeah. that. So, so I would assume somebody like you described and, and I, I will you know support what you had said. I've reviewed data that ran from all of 2011 through the middle of 2012 on noise related complaints on the beach, the establishments, you know, the dates and so on and so forth. And I did not see the, the sea catch um, show up at all in any of those complaints. I would presume that you will continue um, to manage that aspect of your business the way you have been managing it over the years and probably won't um, 
receive any complaints in the future. So does this mean that it has to stop at 11 o'clock? No. It, it means it has to stop at, at 11 o'clock by the ordinance, but the ordinance will only be enforced in the case of a complaint. I see. I see. So there's that little threshold right there. there, there, there and, and we're purposely creating a gray area because we're not trying to create problems mm -hmm. where there isn't a problem by going out and proactively enforcing it. We're trying to be pragmatic about it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bob? Hi, thank you. When Vinny came to town, he bought a little hot dog stand for my father. And since then, you know, he's built up this wonderful business. It's probably one of the one of the guys that was head of, ahead of his time, you know, by the building <coughs> he puts up there. And, and it seems to me that every year you go by, Vinny's doing something else. He's adding another deck or he's adding some more lights. He's, he's making the beach better. And one of the things I like to do as I'm driving up the boulevard, you know, when you're going along, is you see Vinny has an acoustical player or one guy singing songs. If you go by at 11.15 and somebody calls Jamie and calls the chief and says, you know what? Is somebody out of Vinny's deck? The chief has to enforce that, and I think I don't think that that's right. You know, for what the what Vinny has done and making that beach, what it is today. You know, he's got two months to 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 hit his nut to pay those bills. He's got a hundred something employees. Vinny and Kevin are really really good for our town, so I would have to hate to put them at a disadvantage that we have to unplug their music an hour early. So I'd I'd like to see if we can figure something out. Um, on, on that, maybe the decibels have to be a little lower, but his place is damn noisy. If anything, when you go by, it's interesting. So. Okay. Someone else from the public? Okay. Seeing none, Phil? What, was there someone else? I think there's some people getting up. Okay. I would like to recognize the efforts of the select men and women, Chief Sullivan and Deputy Chief Sawyer, for all the research, time, and effort they have devoted to drafting this noise ordinance. I thank you. Noise ordinances are a common factor in many towns today, limiting loud and boisterous noise in music in densely populated areas. Boston home to many restaurants, bars, clubs, and young college students has a noise ordinance of 70 decibels from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and 50 decibels from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. In York, Maine, each mi mixed use district, the decibel level is 65 dBs from 8 a.m to 11 p.m. in 50 dBs from 11 p.m. to 8 a.m. Both of these communities have a thriving nightlife and feel that these limits are both respectful and enforceable. Keeping in mind <coughs> that each 10 decibel increase is twice as loud, we are right to look at to these communities for guidance in setting the decibel level. An around-the-clock noise ordinance would provide Hampton with responsible, reasonable, and fair noise control. Thank you very much for your time and efforts. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Kevin Brown, Seacatch Restaurant. Um, we also have. Um, Vincent Rossetti just spoke. Um, we have automatic roofs that come out and windscreens that come down automatically, and we use it for inclement weather. Mm -hmm. If we open those roofs and make the outside inside, are we inside or outside? And we don't want to. <laughs> we don't want to cause any problems for the board, or for our community, or for our neighbors, or for the police department. Yeah. But for the last 25 years, we have had entertainment outdoors. Mm -hmm. We have a thriving business, employ 265 local people, yep. as well as the European students, 
and this is it's kind of taking something away from the business um, an hour open for 60 days of course we're open from April to October mm -hmm. but those 60 days in July and August mm -hmm. that's 60 hours out of our business profile it's a lot of money to take away from our community so that's all I have to say okay hey, thank, thank you. you somebody else doc <coughs> Speaking on this issue from the Chamber of Commerce's uh, perspective, our Beach Information Center, as you folks know, uh, I never realized it until I got involved with it the last 13 years ago, having lived in Hampton for 40 plus years. People that are coming from tourists, the tourists that come, they want entertainment. Mm -hmm. It's the number one thing that they ask for is at the beach, is what's playing at the, at the seashell stage. Now, admittedly so, that ends at 9.30. When that ends, guess what? They go across the street to the places such as the sea catch, mm -hmm. such as uh, whatever area there is that might be. Although it, it's, it's, it's amazing. People want that good time. People from Canada ask us, where do we go now? They come into that, that information center constantly. Uh, I have never, honestly, we have never heard any complaint from anybody, any tourists or anybody in the nature. They called the Chamber of Commerce. And people have to realize, to believe it or not, for those of you who may or may not know, the Chamber gets a lot of calls pretty simple because we're in the book that it is a chamber of commerce and I think all of us will agree no matter where you go or travel that's the first bastion that you hit chamber of commerce and I have to tell you that personally I, I see nobody complaining at all they this is what they're here for it's a very short season it's a very short season for them whatever they pay in taxes whatever expenses they have it goes through the entire year and I think it's important for us to remember that because without those businesses there would be no Hampton Beach and that more than just the beach by itself. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Alan Gans. I'm an attorney from Seabrook, New Hampshire. Our office represents a few of the businesses down the beach. Um, what I'd like to really focus on is I think that your proposal is not logical, okay? Because for, for two reasons. Number one is you're only doing it based on a complaint. And you're going to have spiteful people who are going to be calling the police for no reason other other than to cause problems with certain businesses. You may end up having businesses call on competitors, as, as an example. Okay? Um, and you may laugh at that, but those things do happen. But the reason, the real reason that I say it's illogical is because 65 decibel, that's fine, okay? But 65 decibel, whether it's emanating from the inside of a building, or emanating from the outside of a building is the same. There is zero difference. So I don't know how you can discriminate against a business because they don't have four walls and a ceiling, okay, when they're doing the same thing that somebody that does have four walls and a ceiling. Realistically, the businesses that have four walls and a ceiling that are providing noise to the uh, outside of the building that's 65 decibels, the noise inside, needless to say, is much louder than 65 decibels. Whereas a business that operates on the outside must operate their business noise level at 65 decibels. I think, quite frankly, is that the police should have the right to enforce the law. Not to wait until someone makes a complaint, but as, as, as you can see, there are several businesses in town that monitor, them, monitor themselves, they do a good job, there haven't been complaints against them, okay? Those that don't comply with the law, like any other law, speeding or anything of that nature, it's up to the police to enforce to determine what uh, what what businesses in this case they, they should go after. Okay, um, just the same way they determine what uh, speeders they should go after. They should be able to have the right to determine whether they're going to give the business a warning, okay, or whether they're going to give write them some sort of an infraction. But clearly, the law, the, the way that you're proposing it doesn't make sense. The 65 decibels is 65 decibels. Thank okay, you. thank you. Somebody else from the public. <coughs> Brian Lapham, 27 I Street. Um, speaking to that effect, isn't there something maybe you could put in the warrant that says, I mean, you grant the licenses. Is there something you could say you could grant the C-catch 
85 decibels, 95 decibels, whatever it is, from 11 to 1 so that they can continue to operate outside. Um, because you also have the delay, you know, the ability to take that away. You know, you say, well, this year we had the chief came to us and we had 97 complaints. Okay, so next year, yeah, you lose that. But could you, is there something, a waiver or something like that you could put in there that says, okay, yeah, we can let these guys operate from 11 to 1. I heard your input. I, I don't find it practical. But it's okay. This question. Thanks. Somebody else from the public. Okay. Seeing none. Back to the board. Comments from the board. Phil, you indicated yes, you wanted you, to. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's great to see the chamber out voicing their opinion uh, on, on this issue. I think the, the board uh, and I've, I've proclaimed uh, my disinterested in proceeding with it. Uh, we're into the uh, uh, no man's land of no joy, no solution no peace. Uh, there are neighbors that uh, are juxtaposed uh, very closely with, with the entertainment sections at the beach and uh, that imposes special encumbrances on them in, in a resort beach area. And I have confidence that good neighbors working with law enforcement, working with the town can, can uh, come to uh, reasonable agreements. The chief of police has stood here tonight and said, and it's very telling, that this is the board's decision. This is not a municipal law enforcement decision. This is a board of selectmen whose average age is uh, um, older than mine. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not by a small amount. And uh, it is a young entertainment beach. Uh, Alan Gans, the attorney from Seabrook, makes uh, uh, a cogent uh, uh, statement. And the sea catch, uh, a, a premier, like all of the businesses at the beach, a premier, classy, classy beach. Uh, with classy tourists uh, from Canada and uh, it is a small kill zone for revenue in the summer and it's getting better and they're improving and extending that but it's inches and it's not yards and it's not uh, it's not a hundred yard game it's eking it out so I, I think the chamber speaking here tonight uh, under the leadership of Doc Noel and Paula Pierre uh, these, these folks need to be listened to and uh, there will there will be uh, there will be litigation if we impose this. There will be uh, discomfort. There will be uh, a drain on our law enforcement with a stopwatch in one hand and a decibel meter in another when there's real crime and real service and real protection of the public to go on. So I could ramble on and take up time, but I, I think my point is clear, and I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Is there a motion in there, Phil? A motion? Uh, I, I don't support uh, any. Uh, I would I would make a motion that we not uh, uh, go forth this year with a no noise ordinance. Okay. Does so anybody wish to second that? I'll second it for discussion because I have a question for the chief. May I? How brave are you this evening? <laughs> you're you're brave all the time. I know <coughs> that. I I admit that even though most of us are old fogies, I kind of like the old days when the police officers could say, shut it down. How comfortable are you, or not, with your authority now, <coughs> if there's a big racket and somebody's making a noise and I complain, hey, it's midnight and so-and-so is keeping all my tenants awake and all my people from Canada are my motel <laughs> awake. What, how comfortable are you with your authority that you can go next door to me where there's a big racket coming out and say, hey, shut it down and be quiet? Well, I think I'll <coughs> rephrase that <laughs> if I can into what yeah. works for me. Um, <laughs> the ordinance previously had some ability for us to have enforcement activity <coughs> on it. Yep. In a previous town meeting, that got <coughs> curtailed pretty significantly that mm -hmm. gave us some limitations. Now, we still have the ability under state law and the disorderly conduct to proceed if there was um, an issue that continued. Uh, we tried to use that very sparingly. We did have some, we have a number of different places where we had, uh, you know, groups that couldn't agree. Mm -hmm. That said, so we have enforcement ability under disorderly conduct statute. There are some other elements that exist in this current ordinance. Mm -hmm. And I think if I'm understanding your question, you're saying if we didn't do this, what, what do we have? Right. 
I see a couple of things. There are some things in that ordinance that are helpful to us. Okay. Keep your doors and windows closed when it's appropriate. Doesn't apply to outside. Obviously, that's a challenge under that that, that we'd need to address somehow. Um, and the other part is, if all failed, we didn't do something to satisfy a, a, a citizen, mm -hmm. they have the ability to write a petition to you and come see you and say, you license these people, Take what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Um, so there's a number of places we could. They're challenging. They're not easy. Yeah. Um, to do a disorderly conduct, we have to have somebody. It can't be the police to say, that's too loud. There has to be a person that comes forward and says, I'm offended by the noise. Um, I'm going to be the witness to go to court. In, a, in a, a resort area, sometimes that's very challenging to find. Um, so there are some significant limitations to that. It's still there, but there's some limitations. Okay. Does that and answer your question? Penal yes. Uh, penalties under the circumstance that you're describing. Mm -hmm. and other than going and saying, I've had complaints against you, you're making too much of a racket, shut it down. We, we do that customarily when we have complaints initially. Hey, look, we're getting complaints, do this, that, and the other thing. Um, and we find most places are responsive. But right. there are circumstances where those two opposing views, you know, I've got a business 24 feet across from another business, and we do two different types of businesses. Yeah. One's trying to get people to sleep. One's trying to get people entertained. Right. What's the middle ground for that? Um, and and it, it's, that's a challenging circumstance. What do we do in that case? Um, is it loud and unreasonable noise that would disturb a person of average sensibilities. Well, we have to have that person come forward. They have to be the witness. They have to go forward. That's a challenging process to, mm -hmm. in, a, in a resort beach to deal with. But it's certainly there for us. But uh, you, and you could go, you could say to the complainant, uh, if this is really causing a problem for you, then approach the selectman and ask to have the license pulled. Absolutely. The, 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 the previous right. ordinance or the current ordinance allows there to be a written complaint on mm -hmm. um, paper to you folks saying, we believe that there's a problem here, you need to hear it. we issue the license, then. Right. Um, you know, obviously that's simplistic and I'm paraphrasing, right. but, then, I, yeah, I, this but your first instinct is to do a warning, not go in and say, we're going to fine you, we're going to do something dreadful to you. Yeah, you, our, you our, our standard would be what we generally did, our officers would go to a complaint mm -hmm. and the officers apply their common sense. Now, again, in disorderly conduct, the police don't count. What, what we think, is, it doesn't count. We're not a reasonable person right. according to the, st the, the law. <laughs> but we do go in and try and mitigate to say, hey, let's do something different. Let's try and change that. It always comes down to those places that you can't do that. Most do. Some don't. And we're left with what's the enforcement. That's what the genesis of developing this for the board was, the research, so that we can have an additional tool. But I would wait a second, Richard. But basically, so the remedy at law for a complainant who is not comfortable with the outcome in the extreme circumstance then has the remedy to come to this board. Under the ordinance for the, the licensing authority, mm -hmm. they have the petition to petition the selectmen for some method of action. Yes. And that's in place now? Yes. Thank you. I would add that if you go back 2011-2012, um, the police produced a report for us that covered all of 2011 and I think through about June of 2012, mm -hmm. which provided a history of, of all of the noise-related complaints, the establishments, so on and so forth. There were periods, particularly in 2011, bearing in mind that 11 was before that change at deliberative session in 2012, which limited the enforcement to a one-hour window in 2011, where there were many, many, many complaints for noise. And the feedback that we have had as we started discussing this in 2012 from the PD is that there are problems, limitations in the or ordinance which inhibit our ability to enforce this, okay? The warrant article that we have at this point is a product of the work of the PD. I think in particular mm -hmm. Rich Sawyer did most of the work researching it and other um, <coughs> municipalities. I believe it was the York, Maine that was kind of the, the boilerplate or the benchmark. Mm -hmm. That in turn was worked on by the town attorney and it was ultimately the selectmen had some influence on that with probably um, the biggest piece being the subjective decision of should it be 65 and 75 dB or should it be 70 dB um, and 80 dB. I honestly don't, and I think I probably have as much time into this as anybody with the exception of, of Rich, believe that we are going to ultimately inhibit anybody who has given consideration um, 
and working with their neighbors. It simply gives us a tool for the small portions of, of time or the, 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 the unusual situations where that doesn't take place. And I think that the fact that an enforceable ordinance exists, if that's the ultimate outcome that we have from all this, will be a deterrent unto itself. Okay. Right, so are you alleging that our authority to issue or revoke uh, entertainment permits is not an effective tool? I would hope that we don't. I would like to have, I would like to think that we craft a scenario where we don't get to that point, and that is the intent. <laughs> Okay, okay. I'd like to, uh, that, in, in the interest, we have a very lengthy agenda. Give me a second, though. I want to hear what the chief was saying. No, no, I was just saying that my, my experience in all the years I've been here, I think that, to my knowledge, only occurred once. So, of petitioning the board. Okay, we've got an awful lot of items on the agenda here. We've been on this one a while. We've got I a motion. Wanted, Mary Louise, you seconded it. I would like it. to yes, make a comment before you continue. I'd like to rebut Mr. Uh, Bean's, uh, fellow Slugman <coughs> Bean's remarks. The only one thing that got me even considering this issue were numerous complaints to me personally about noise. It wasn't any personal agenda by me or anything that I think about philosophical like Mr. Bean seems to think we're going down that path. I don't subscribe to that at all. It was complaints to me personally from people who pay taxes in this town mm -hmm. about the noise levels. And I am convinced that there need to be something done about it. Now the question is how much, and we're trying to put that together. And I am not in the least bit of a position to back off from this Warren article. And okay. We have a motion. We have a second. I'd like to bring that to a vote. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Motion fails. 1-4 uh, with uh, Pierce. Nichols, Pluff, and Woolsey opposed. I'd like to move on to the next agenda item. Okay. Thank you for all the input. Next item, public comment on solid waste and commercial trash collection. And I'd <coughs> like to say a few, a few words, not much details on this one. Um, this is on there simply because um, Chuck Rage, at a meeting we had a couple of weeks ago, the mm -hmm. chairman of the Beach Commission requested that it be there. The reason this is referred to as public comment on solid waste as opposed to a public hearing, there is no um, selectman sponsored warrant article that impacts this, so there's nothing to have a hearing over. However, um, just trying to be responsive um, to people who would like to make some, some, some comments. There is no selectman sponsored warrant article at this point. We've had three votes on proposals, one of which was to eliminate commercial trash, which was turned down on a 4-1 vote, one of which was to institute a system in which the people generating more than once a week pick up per cart and that whole thing um, would be paying some sort of a fee that initially passed 4-1 in a subsequent vote that, uh, that failed 3-2. So at this point, there is no selectman sponsored warrant article. For what it's worth, at this point, um, there is no petitioned warrant article. However, the cutoff date for petition warrant articles is not till January 14th. 14, January 14th. So um, just kind of the background on, on what people wish to comment. Um, it's unlike the um, noise on the entertainment ordinance where we are sponsoring an order article. That, uh, you know, I'm not sure what you're trying to convince the Board of Selectmen of in your comments, but I wanted to put that background out there. So, somebody from the public wished to comment, and there he is, the guy that requested. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Rage, 121 Ocean Boulevard. Um, you can tell by the amount of people that are here on a cold winter night when uh, a good portion of the people aren't in town right now. So uh, you can tell how passionate we are about uh, trash. Um, You've already heard everything that I have to say. I, I'm, I'm going to be very brief. One of the things that I want to stress toward people that are looking to do a, a, uh, a public war article or um, petition, a, a petition war, war I'm sorry, or uh, people that are looking, you know, to support that or not, su or, or not support it, is right now we have a, a very clean town, a very well efficient run public works 
department in the town and to start seeing um, 20 different companies coming in and out of town different trucks coming at different times uh, through the town I think we're, we're, we're heading down the wrong path we have a, we have a great system the way it's going and I think that um, you're, you're not looking at these some of these people aren't looking at the cost that is, that's going to affect this town where you're going to have to three and four times the size of the transfer station to, to be able to handle all the cars that are going down there I don't know about uh, any of you but I've gone to the public I've gone to the transfer station and waited in line for an hour on a busy weekend um, an hour is going to be an easy day um, so I, I think the way the system's running now uh, the cost of everything of the road cost down the hot arts way um, cost of building a new transfer station you're trying to save pennies and you're going to be spending dollars so I really I really want to stress to the people in town to uh, support a clean town a clean beach a clean community we are one community we're all together and um, by bringing people out here today I just want to show that there's um, a strong support for keeping things the way they are thank you I don't want anybody to get nervous with the paper. It's three and a half minutes approximately. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who may not know me, my name is Dr. Noel, and I'm the president of the Hampton Area Chamber of Commerce. And thank you for your time. I represent the board of directors of 20 people, business people in the area, in our seacoast area, comprised of 20 business leaders as well, over 400 plus <coughs> members in our organization. The majority of these do the businesses in Hampton and Hampton Beach. Our members are vehemently opposed to the stopping of trash collection for the commercial businesses in Hampton. There is a reason with your board not decided not to further explore that at the time discontinuation, discontinuation of trash pickup. The reason is simple. It's just not the right thing to do. The town of Hampton is a destination for tourists, as I mentioned a while ago. The Hampton area economy is driven by the beach. The amount of money generated by parking, restaurants, hotels, and shops is immeasurable. There is a reason why the state of New Hampshire spent $15, $16 million in a tight economy to improve the beach. They realize the benefits of tourism. I deal with them almost daily. I'm glad to say the new Hampton Beach is something to be proud of. The number of people that comment on the change is impressive. When you say you're from Hampton, immediately you hear comments about the new beach. Don't forget that many times Hampton Beach has been voted one of the cleanest beaches in the country. Five Star Beach. <coughs> Excuse me. And now, the, and now one of the cleanest beaches in the country may not have their trash picked up on a normal basis. Seafood Festival voted again, top 100 event, and that's because there's been more and more people coming in. The town of Hampton has been recognized nationally, and I mean that sincerely. When neighboring towns meet to discuss how they can improve their tax base, it's always by increasing the commercial and industrial zone. It's a known fact that residential homes do not add value to a tax base. They use too much services such as schools, which are a huge draw on the community. Mandated special needs programs in recent years have increased school budgets tremendously. Now businesses, these people, don't add one child to the school system and pay more than their fair share of the taxes due to their high assessment on their properties where they are located. They pay the higher taxes, use lesser services, and now we want to try to take the cash, I'm sorry, the trash collection away from them. By, by voting to cease collection with no other option is not the right way. Not much thought goes into the process. This board should be working with our business community and trying to tweak the entire process. The business community is an intelligent group of people, have many great ideas. It's great to take advantage of them, sit down with us or them, iron out solutions that it's feasible to all members of the community. That is the great democratic way. In the next few weeks, our organization will work to stop this article from passing. It's the right thing for Hampton. We want Hampton to move forward, not backward, and continue to hold our heads high with pride for our community, including the beach and the downtown businesses. And I emphasize the beach and the downtown businesses. The reason why we say that is because we are, in fact, one town, one town in <coughs> Hampton. This chamber covers the entire seacoast area, but Hampton is our central focus for the obvious reasons that we have spoke about. Let's keep things going, and thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, someone else from the public. Bob? <clears throat> Bob Ladd, 7 Cutler Avenue, Village District.
Commissioner. In the past few years, a combination of town and state financing has totally turned the beach around. Now the third part of that stool is in place. The business community is dramatically improving its investment in the beach. So it seems to me that this would be a negative to encourage that growth. Come build in our town, but we won't pick up your trash kind of mindset is probably not the way we should be going. To the audience, I would say, look at this as kind of a fairness issue. On surface, it appears if I vote to do away with commercial trash pickup, I'll save a few pennies on my tax bill. But if you're being fair about this, would you vote to do away with your own trash pickup so I could, as a business, save a few pennies on my tax bill? I don't think either of those is the way to go. If the business community said, we will place a warrant article saying only parents with children in the school system should pay for the schools. Would anyone support that? Of course not. Community is simply the coming together of the many to serve the greater good of the whole. So fairness is an issue. As far as the term commercial, we could spend days interpreting what commercial means, i.e., if I am a self-employed person declaring a federal tax write-up for a home office, am I a commercial business which would be deprived trash pickup in the town? I don't know. If my real estate that I live in was in a corporate realty trust form of ownership, am I a commercial business that wouldn't be entitled to trash pickup in the town? If I live on the second floor and there's a store on the fourth, first floor, would my trash pickup not be picked up because I'm in a commercial building? We could go on and on up this road to what effect? <coughs> it's divisive. It's really not economically effective. And as far as saying most communities in New Hampshire don't pick up commercial trash, there's quite a distinction in this town from those towns. Most communities don't have town-owned parking lots in a resort area which are heavily subsidized but by the use of people who come to that beach to visit the businesses on the beach generating last year over half a million dollars of revenue in parking. So finally I would say never have so few given so much to so many and asked for so little in return. Thank you. Thank you Bob. Someone else from the public. Okay. Sir? I'm Tim Bandel. I'm the owner of the Greyhurst Hotel, 11 F Street. Uh, we're a small property. Uh, we have uh, 13 units, 19 bedrooms. Uh, on weekends, and basically during the high time, uh, <coughs> we have uh, four cans that we fill up every single day with trash and with recyclables. Uh, I cannot imagine the commercial side of it not being picked up, mainly because <coughs> what's going to happen is if you have 200 businesses down on the beach, you're going to have 25 different uh, contractors down there at any given time trying to pick up trash from 6 in the morning till 6 at night. You're going to have cans out on the sidewalks. You're going to have people walking in the streets to avoid the cans. Uh, F Street has some businesses down there that do their best to keep the street clean and keep their barrels, you know, uh, as close to the building as possible. But I'll tell you, you know, to eliminate a commercial trash pickup, uh, I think, is very, very short-sighted. Uh, the beach generates a lot of income. Uh, points were made up that I wanted to bring up here. The only thing I can say is my wife, li my wife and I live there. We don't have any kids. We pay our taxes like everybody else. I pay close to $11,000 a year in taxes and only have 13 units to show. It's, uh, I think it's very short-sighted to even think that we would uh, do away with the commercial side of uh, trash pickup. Thank you. Someone else from the public? 
Okay. Seeing none, anybody from the board wish to comment before we move on to the next agenda? Oh, I'd like to comment, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'd like to uh, uh, again uh, say, and, and you've stated that there is no board warrant article to change tax collection. That's correct. And I do think it's incumbent upon us as leaders when we sign on to this joyous little club of uh, a band of four brothers and one sister that when we do uh, have a collective uh, decision and we have a uh, decision-making body, that we respect that and we stay within what the board adheres to. Last year there was 79E, it was approved 4 to 1, and this is an example that speaks to private petitions by board members. I voted against it. This year it was brought up to the table again. Selectman Plouffe, Selectman Wolsey and I have voted in favor of repealing that. But it wouldn't be incumbent upon me, nor right, I think, serving as a selectman, to go out and produce a private petition to circumvent the board, which is elected by the town. It's difficult to uh, add to anything that the business owners have said tonight on the noise ordinance. It's difficult to add to anything the business owners have said on trash collection. And I think we send uh, mixed messages. I think we, uh, we uh, raise alarm from them. And I think we uh, um, leave them with the feeling that uh, uh, they're not appreciated. And uh, we'll, we'll tax them. Uh, we'll, we'll take their money. We won't uh, acknowledge the fact that in addition to what that fine young gentleman talked about uh, in terms of the parking lots, uh, the half million dollars that comes back on the meals and rooms, the fact that these folks employ our children and that they further educate them in the workplace once they leave secondary education. So I'd like to again disassociate myself from that effort uh, of a private uh, petition by any board members and I think you stay in house and you work with the board. Thank you, sir. Anybody else from the board? Comments? Mike? Mike? Mary Louise? No? No. Um, I have a couple. Um, I think a lot's been stated about, geez, you know, um, <coughs> businesses or whatever, don't put kids into the schools and whatever. And I would just point out that there, are, I'm not sure that that's a fair comparison to picking up trash. <coughs> to provide a public education is a requirement of the state constitution. It's also a requirement of, of the statutes. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 not um, a requirement that that trash be picked up or at businesses three days or five days or seven days a week. So I, I just feel a need to point that out that it's not a, a direct an analogy. And as someone who pays a lot of taxes, one of the gentlemen uh, mentioned eleven thousand dollars a year. That happens to be about what I pay in taxes on a single family home. Um, I don't have kids in the schools, never had kids in the schools, um, don't have um, trash pickup, never had um, trash pickup at all. I take it to the transfer station because they don't pick up. So I'm sympathetic to, you know, some of the, ine the, the apparent inequities, but, but the bottom line, by statute, you're taxed based on the value of your property. That's state law. You can't change it. There is no scheme to try and tax people based on some sort of what services do they get. Um, having said all that, we, we went into this with, with um, asking the DPW director to, to do some research and, and essentially provide us with some options. And, and he provided us with three options. One option was to maintain the status quo and continue along with exactly what has been going on. A second option that he offered up was the elimination of commercial trash. And a third option, something that I would feel could be described as a compromise was something in the middle which essentially would have all property owners, whether you were a <coughs> residence or a commercial property owner or whatever, be paying for more than one um, car trash pickup per week. Um, the compromise is much more complicated as often they are as opposed to the simplistic solutions and, and that didn't fly with the board. I personally am opposed to eliminating commercial trash. I lived, I, I, I live on the beach now in Boar's Head. I lived um, on F Street for, for, for two years. I'm constantly down through there, um, whatever. And I don't think, I agree that there is an issue of the tax base overall subsidi subsidizing to some extent businesses pick getting picked up seven days a week. But I don't think the, that, that, that eliminating commercial trash is a good solution. As a matter of fact, I think it's a bad solution. I, I think it will create a lot of unintended consequences. I, I, my own personal observations and, and, and a comment made to me by somebody with a lot more experience picking up trash on the beach than I do indicated that, that he felt that roughly about 30 percent 
um, of the businesses down on the beach don't have the space for a dumpster, which kind of puts you at the mercy um, of, of trash collection um, companies. And I just offer a lot of people make the comment, geez, it, it's, it's going to be bad because we're going to have 20 or 25 or whatever trash companies running around. I, I, I personally um, don't think that's going to happen, and I'll tell you why. Back in, in 2010, we bid out our recycling contract, which had been with waste management at the time. When we bid that out, and we had been paying $285,000 a year, um, only one company responded. That was waste management. There were four or five companies. Trash pickup is an oligopoly. It's not a monopoly. It's, it's not a widely, in this day and age anyway, um, distributed amongst a lot of companies. Only one company bid. That company bid 355000 for what the prior year had been 285000 um, <coughs> I, I shudder to think what businesses might be getting for quotes, particularly those that don't have the space for a dumpster, to have to pay for somebody to show up, you know, three days or five days or seven days a week to pick up individual carts, which is, you know, not the most efficient way. So Mr. Chairman, those, are, those are my... Um, Comments. Um, uh, you brought up a point that I don't really agree with. You indicated that the school system is mandated by law and picking up the trash is not. Mm -hmm. You're using that as a comparison of the two issues. I think that the town of Hampton is in the business to provide services and educate our children. And I do not want to see a separation of educating our kids and picking up trash. I don't think that's the way they even begin to look at it. It's a service that the town wants, the town will provide it. It's up to the legislative body to decide if they want it or not. And that's my feeling. And to compare one to the other, I think is like comparing apples and oranges. It's not the right way to look at it. Just because something's mandated by law doesn't mean that it's necessarily any worse or any better than any other issue that the town is providing services a service or services to this community. And I have to make one closing remark, and that is one trash bag. My favorite remark, floating across that beach in the summertime makes it look really bad, and I'm all for keeping the trash going. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. We'll move on to the next item. Thank you very much. As a matter of fact, we'll take maybe a two-minute break as I think we're going to clear out here. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Continuing, <laughs> continuing along. Actually, I'm going to take a break. Okay, Mary Louise. Cool. Continuing along. <laughs> I'm trying to public, continue along. Public comment, as opposed to a specific public comment. Would anybody from the public wish to comment? Arthur doesn't know you. You wore them all out. Paging. <laughs> I think there's one guy I might not have. <laughs> He's headed this way. Yeah. Arthur, who? Arthur's back. Good for Arthur. Huh? Yeah, we're waiting on you. Did, did you want to comment? Public Aerial comment? Aerial photo. 375. Oh. But uh, you, you already set the cover, so. Yeah. And that's the only thing that's in color. So. Okay. Do it. 
Thank you. Okay. Arthur. Thank you, Arthur. Be careful. Okay. Announcements and community calendar. Yes, I have Mike? one. Yeah, I have one, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the Hampton Arts Network December Artist of the Month is Barbara Fusenbark. The title of her exhibit is Granite Treasures. Barbara's favorite pick subjects are mountains. Her vibrant oil paintings are created mm -hmm. using uh, palette knives. Abusenbach started as a painting as a teenager and studied with several master painters. In May, Barbara opened uh, a gallery in Hampton Falls called the Color Notes Art Gallery. And her artwork will be on display in this town office until January 3 and will be for sale and the public may view the art during the regular business hours of the town hall. Thank you. Phil, yes, sir. I uh, just want to extend uh, remarks on uh, Mr. Lassard and uh, his entire family, uh, his, uh, his sons, uh, his brother, Jack Lassard, um, his sister, Connie, Colonel uh, Paul Lassard, and uh, their, their deeds went far past serving the nation as uh, combatants, and including Jack Vogt, uh, his brother-in-law, uh, Marine combatants uh, through uh, more than a couple of different wars. But more than that, when uh, the community needed them as friends, or you needed something plowed, or you needed a quick solution, uh, they, w they were right there. And uh, uh, they, took, uh, they took some heat, in particular Vic, in this last year while I was on this board. And uh, there was a manner, and there was a, uh, um, a, uh, a caliber to the discussion that, that, that uh, um, was not appropriate for the, for the significant contributions that family has made to this nation and to this town. And so uh, a heartfelt, a heartfelt uh, debt of gratitude to that entire family. Uh, hospitality folks back in the day, almost 100 years ago, uh, experienced their share of grief, um, losing their mother as young children. And, and that family is, uh, is legendary, and uh, it is a Hampton family. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mike, Mary Louise. And Vicki was born in Lowell. <laughs> like and, and which Lassard was born in Hampton? Like that's Summer. a trivia yeah. question. There's one yeah. that was born in Hampton. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Well, hey. um, as uh, a member of the board, along with my colleagues who attended the ribbon cutting or the hose cutting, at the beach uh, fire station last Thursday. I have to say that for a, a new chief, a young chief, an absolutely outstanding manager, Chief Silver has done a remarkable, remarkable job bringing us up to date and bringing us into the 21st century for the fire service. And uh, I, I hope many of you get a chance to, to go to view the stations and to see the, uh, the absolutely outstanding job of planning and coordination that took place with those stations being constructed. Um, God love him, he had more dumped on him, I think, than any chief. Really, he had a huge responsibility starting from the, the first day he was sworn in. Uh, and also, of course, having served as the first paramedic in the history of the Hampton Fire Department. But I, I don't know that there is uh, ever enough this community can do to thank uh, Chief Silver for what he has accomplished in our behalf. I'm very grateful. Okay, I have um, one item. I'd just like to put out there a reminder for the public that you can sign up for the town's non-emergency notification systems. Mm. Yeah. We have broadcast email, voice over telephone, and Facebook notifications which will go out to you when there's some sort of, of non-emergency event issue. I'll give a couple of examples occur as opposed to you have, having to go to a website or, or whatever. Over 700 people have signed up for these proactive notifications at this point. Um, they're primarily DPW related, again, they're non-emergency or whatever, but for example, this past weekend's parking van, uh, parking ban went out over the broadcast email, Facebook, and over the um, voicemail. So people know there's a parking van, you don't end up in a situation where um, your car is up in the street and, ooh, I didn't know there was a parking van or, or whatever. So it, it, it's free, it's, it's simple, it's the use of technology that isn't costing the town a heck of a lot. Um, and, and DPW over the last 
four, five, six weeks has done a great job of getting that information out there. Tra uh, weather event, trash pickup is delayed. People get a notification that mm -hmm. the trash pickup is going to be on Wednesday versus Tuesday and, and so yeah. on. Um, you can sign up for any of these on the town website or if you don't have web access, in which case the voice phone notification would make sense. Um, there's a form that you would fill out at town hall and I believe it's on the table so up there yeah. in between yeah. the assessing and the uh, town clerk's office. So I just want to on an ongoing mm -hmm. basis, I'll bring this up every now and then. I've watched the numbers um, slowly but very steadily um, grow since we instituted these capabilities. So. Mr. Chairman, and also in the interest of <laughs> proper grammar because I watched Channel 22. They were not told to not park in the right away. They should have right. said, please do not park in the right of way. Please, whoever's doing it. Okay. So there we go. Um, first appointment of the evening, Keith Noyes, DPW Director. Several items starting with a change order at the Church Street pump station. Keith? Um, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> Five minutes public comment. We, that's what we brought you up for. We actually already went went by that, Arthur. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't hear it. You had a two-minute break, and I didn't think you'd re reconvene. Would, would you brought up the picture, Arthur? Oh yeah. Oh, I see. That was on that, television. That was yeah. Oh, yeah. that was. I'll your tell you what. Comment. I'll tell you what, Arthur. <laughs> go, I go ahead. I, I didn't go ahead and reconvene. And go go <laughs> ahead and um, let's see if you know. Oh, <laughs> it's only because I have a deadline. <laughs> the 18? Uh, yeah. we're, we're, uh, yeah. We have some 375th memorabilia attire, uh, and uh, Art Moody, as a member of the commission, will be selling it in two days, Wednesday afternoon, the 18th, yeah. at 3 p.m. in the lobby, which doesn't have a name yet, uh, upstairs. Uh, we've got four embroidered hats, different cut four different colors, and we got logo coffee mugs, and we got T-shirts, which reminds me that it's probably time for people to replace their Jacoby Ellsbury shirts. <laughs> 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 and we have this Goody Cole uh, T-shirt. She play for uh, the Red and she's she's lasted over 300 years. <laughs> Jacoby only lasted seven years with the Red Sox, <laughs> <laughs> and he went on to that evil empire in New York City. Uh, but she was the first uh, and only person to be convicted of being familiar with the devil, witchcraft in New Hampshire, what became New Hampshire in the 1600s. And we have her. We have a New Hampshire old old man of the mountain license plate with her G D Y C O L E on it, and four points of her life, including two two times jailed in Boston for being convicted by the Massachusetts Bay Colony courts. Uh, we have some other items. We're going to reduce prices on everything, and we're giving uh, free items uh, with a T-shirt, a hat, or a mug. And we're also, one per family, we have a throwback 350th anniversary license plate that we'll give for sale. Uh, that's 25 years old. It's still pretty clean. I don't have too many of those. But uh, I had nothing to do with those, in fact. And uh, I hope to see a number of people. Next year, we don't become the town of Hampton until next year, 375 years ago. But So we're still one of kind of plantation at this point in time, 375 years ago. And uh, last chance of the year to take some of these items and help the town coffers. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Arthur. <coughs> so the first item is the Church Street Pump Station change order request. I'm requesting authorization from the board to process a work order for the Church Street Pump Station for the amount of $7,722.50. This change order is necessary to add a second electrical 
disconnect for use as the sideline side main power breaker. This work has been approved by the town electrical inspector and the project engineer. I will so move. Second. Discussion? I got a couple of questions. Um, in, in reading um, the Wright Pierce memo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, to be honest with you, the only thing I saw there that, that justified it was that it looked like it didn't reference the building inspector by name. It referred to the AHJ, but I assume that's the authority having justification that that's the building inspector. Yes. But the only thing I saw there was the building inspector wanted it, and I'm just curious beyond that, what is the benefit from either a, a safety or a future cost reduction or a level, in ser level of service improvement to the com community or whatever? What, what are we getting for our $7,700 besides the building inspector wanted it? I believe that it's connected with this. The UNITIL is now requiring the cold sequence meter to be replaced with the CT cabinet. I believe that it's associated with that. Is that a safety issue or what, what is? Yes. Yes, I would think. It allows you to, to, to have a service so the CT cabinet can be maintained and the CTs can be changed mm. without cutting off the power at the pole. So, so what you're saying is then it's driven by it being a safety issue? Yes. Oh, yes. Well, why was this not picked up and if it's a safety issue, why was this overlooked in the original design? Yeah, can it, in a project like this, three and a half million dollars, gonna, you can't cut. I'm just cut asking it this way. Yeah. I fully ex it Right. Except the fact that if we're, we're fortunate, we've only spent twelve thousand. This will be twelve thousand yes. dollars in change orders. Okay. Two change orders for a three point five million dollar project. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. So, okay, all in favor? Can't take it out. Of what unanimous? Uh, Keith's uh, personal account is that where this comes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you also had Keith a couple of um, bids that you were looking for yes. the waivers on. Yes, uh, and I am. One at a time, starting sure. with what the diesel. Yeah, sure, That's I'm going to have one. Mike. He's the, uh, been working on these two purchases. Okay, we'll start with the uh, sulfur diesel first. Mm -hmm. um, on 1126, we accepted bids for the second time to acquire this service. Um, currently, we average about 9,000 gallons of ultra-low sulfur diesel for our off-road equipment, such as loaders and backhoes and our trackless sidewalk plows. Um, we only had one qualified bidder for the second time now with Atlantic Fuels. They have currently been providing service to us since 2010. Um, this is, does not come in compliance with the purchasing policies. We did not have three respected bidders. Um, so in result of the non-compliance, we were requesting a waiver to acquire Atlantic Service to continue to deliver diesel fuel to our facility. Um, I feel they have the reputation, the skill set. Um, they're always in a timely fashion when we call upon them to provide our service for us to go and do our job. Mr. Chairman, I'll also move that the 2013-023 waiver request for the ultra-low sulfur diesel be accepted. Okay, uh, we have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Um, I again have a couple of questions. <laughs> um, there's no amount listed here. I, I, I looked at it and it looked to me like it was thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars Is that correct? Um, to year to date, including the delivery we got on Friday, we're about twenty-four thousand right now okay. for this year. So I'm in, in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, is is all of our diesel fuel usage so-called ultra-low sulfur? For that equipment, yes. Um, the other diesel fuel comes out of the state. Okay. Okay. So this is just so for our. What off was the equipment that uses this? You mentioned like our, our loader, the backhoes. Okay. Our sidewalk plows. Okay. 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 Because okay. to go from public works to the state sheds an eight mile round trip. Okay. So so we've got a couple of pieces of equipment that use this. Mm -hmm. We have storage tanks um, on the DPW um, mm -hmm. site, and and we basically um, fill up from that. But the the the, the remainder of them are are, are buying okay. off the state contract. Correct. And whatever. Okay. That's fine. Um, I'm voting. Okay. I'm all set. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. And the brush. Okay. Um, once again, we um, put that out for bid, and we had um, three respected bidders, and um, the lowest qualified bidder was Douglas W. Jones, um, who had the lowest qualified bid. Um, in respects to Second Nature, who was the other, they did not meet the criteria. They went by the day and not by 
the yearly annual cost. Um, in respect to the Dirt Doctor, they did meet the criteria, but they are the highest of the three bidders, um, two being the other one being Douglas W. Jones. So we would like to once again recommend that we um, proceed with the waiver process and go ahead with Douglas W. Jones. Um, I think they meet the criteria, the reputation. They've had our services since 2011 um, in providing this service for us. Chairman, I will move uh, in the matter of 2013-018 <coughs> grinding and removal of brush and wood that we authorize a waiver and uh, uh, approve that the bid go to Douglas Wood. Julie, and Douglas Jones. Jones. Sorry about that. Second. Seconded by... Uh, he does wood. Selectman yeah. Pluff. I have some questions, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Thank you. Um, what brush and stuff are they cutting? I thought, we were, um, they're actually be I thought we were chopping down our own trees. No, this is actually yeah. the brush and stumps and everything that's brought to the transfer station. Yeah. For, oh, the the brought to the for the residents. For the residents, yeah. Okay. It's the stuff I, I bring to the brush pile, Mike. Well, you're down there all the time, though. <laughs> anyway, no, I just was curious because I know we chopped down our own trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions, sir? Yep. I got a comment and a question. Um, just to clarify the purchasing policy. At, at something less than a fifteen thousand dollar threshold, even with less than three bidders or awarding it to low bidder, you don't have to come um, before the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. That fifteen thousand dollars is a, mm -hmm. a threshold. I mean, obviously I you were. I, I think the you issue on this one that the town manager was concerned about was the multi-year, the three-year mm -hmm. contract. Right. Yeah. And, and be Just honest with you, I, if, if, if I see that again, I'll point it out to you so you don't necessarily or unnecessarily get dragged out, but I saw you were here anyway yeah. on the yeah. diesel fuel. The, the only other question I have, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, is it appeared that we were planning on spending about twice as much in 14 versus 13. Did I interpret that right? Yep. No, absolutely. So you, you did. Um, actually, Douglas W. Jones came out in the spring. So what it is is they'll come out twice a year, three days. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the first time they came out was in the spring. So just to be fair, they came out for the second half of 2013, and we're going to do it again for the other 42. So it's not really rising. It, it, it's no. just that that's a, a no, and then in, um, half year number. Yep, yeah. and then in 14 and 15, the price actually drops by $200. dollars. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. It's, it's, it's a three-year contract, 21,000. So I don't understand your 15,000. Oh, you're right. Yep. You're right. That's why I came. Yep. yep. Good. Good point. Thank you. Okay. All in favor. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I had Chris come in. I guess you're going to be talking about the sewer development charge. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we can? I, I wasn't anticipating articles? talking about that tonight because we didn't see an updated draft of that. Okay. So, so, but having said that, I know that the um, town attorney and Chris are working together. I certainly would like to see an updated draft by the end of the week. Um, Next week, you know, so that we're able to discuss we need it. To get that ba basically, in. at this point, that that's one of kind of a short list of ones that, mm -hmm. you know, could have, you know, they're, they're complicated or whatever. And I think we're down to four weeks left before <coughs> we run into the cutoff date for right. yeah. sorry, twenty third, thirtieth, sixth, and fourteenth, thirteenth. Yeah. yeah, I think we that was almost done. done. Yeah. When is the last day for us? Fourteenth. Fourteenth. So our last meeting. Last? January. Yeah. In our the warrant article. Fourteenth is yeah. the date, Mike, and but the selectmen's meeting is the date yeah. before that, thirteenth. So. Fourteenth was private petition. It's the same. No, it's same. Same. Thank you. And Thanks. we're very grateful to Deputy uh, Jacobs too for his hard work on this. This has been quite a quite a piece to put together. Okay. Next appointment: Wendy Lull, President Seacoast Science Center Marine Mammal Rescue on Hampton Beach. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. This evening. Uh, I'm the president. Use the microphone with you. Use the microphone. It's very hard for me to stand still and talk, so, but I'll try. So uh, I'm the president. The president of the Seco Science Center, and I also have a member of our board here, Brian Fitzgerald, and uh, Ashley Stokes will be the stranding uh, coordinator. And the short purpose for my presentation is going to be a request for the placement of some signs at the uh, beach access points. But I have a very short presentation, a little bit about um, uh, marine mammal rescue. A few, I know it's been a long meeting, so I'll try to be fairly quick. Um, 
you may or may not know that uh, since 1968, the New England Aquarium has been responsible for uh, mm -hmm. rescuing all of the animals. And starting January 1st, uh, 2014, they will no longer be doing that. We have been approached by and um, now authorized by National Marine Fisheries to pick that up. So. Um, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, as you know, started about 40 years ago, and it was uh, done because the, of the recognition that marine mammals are really considered to be the sentinels of the sea. They are in the same waters we are, eat much of the same foods that we are. The United States is the first country that actually uh, put into law the protection of these uh, very important animals. And the law is implemented by members of a network uh, who are responsible for um, doing this full stranding response, which includes collecting and disseminating data. The, uh, in addition to just uh, managing the people on the beach, uh, we will be taking data that is part of a national and then international database of what's going on with marine mammals, uh, both in terms of their health and their population numbers. We also will be working with uh, other, uh, understanding other parameters and uh, coordinating with a whole network of organizations, which I'll talk about in a moment. So uh, there are about 100 organizations in all of the United States for each state and in our, all of our coastal waters. And uh, as I said, the New England Aquarium has been doing it since uh, 78. A number of our staff, including Ashley, uh, have been doing it as volunteers for about seven years. So it works very well with us because we have experience in education, uh, volunteering, and volunteer management. Um, and so then again, starting on the, the first, we will be taking on for um, New Hampshire. We're covering a coast. Uh, most of the animals that we'll see are on the on the ocean coast, but the full response territory we have is 238 miles. So we're doing the whole rivers and also out in the Isles. Uh, Isles of Shoals. Um, these are the four animals that we see, and I put in the, the dates that uh, they pup and how long that they stay with their mothers, because the longer they stay with the mothers, uh, the less, um, shall we say, aggressive they are. The hooded seals uh, are only stay with their mothers for about four days, so you can oh. imagine how... Um, how much they have to learn in terms of fishing uh, yeah. to learn to go from mom to fish. Most of the animals that we see are harbor seals uh, and they are fortunately among the less aggressive animals that we see. And uh, like the tourists, most of them come in the summertime. And so uh, this gives you just a sense of the, uh, the rate at which you will see the animals. The gray bars there were this, the unusual mortality event, which is the mm -hmm. federal definition of yep. when all of a sudden you got a lot more dead animals. Uh, and Hampton Beach was ground zero for that. It was watched very closely, as many of you know. I don't have to wow. tell you. On an average, we see about 70, we'll see about 70 animals. And Hampton uh, beaches are most of those, 38%. Um, and so this is what we're going to be doing. We will be staffing a 24-7 uh, hotline. That's the number. And uh, we'll be training and doing a lot of education. So one, the other reason that we're here is to introduce ourselves to the town so that uh, if we have the opportunity to work with uh, the police, the fire, we've, of course, contacted all the police departments. We're very interested right. in working with your lifeguards. We've done a fabulous job with uh, managing the public as much as the SEALs. Um, and Chief Silver said he was interested in volunteering with us as well, so that's very exciting. Uh, and then we will be deploying responders. We ha will have a number of the volunteers who have worked with New England Aquarium will be continuing to work with us. Uh, we'll have a training for that group in uh, January and February, and then we'll open up for new volunteer opportunities who will work specifically uh, with us in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, once we come on site, we triage the animals and we rank them, of course, they could be dead in a variety of ways of being dead. Um, of, and then we monitor the healthy ones and transport the uh, sick animals to the University of New England uh, in Biddeford, which is uh, still part of what's been happening. So we're still working with New England Aquarium and with the University of New England. Um, we're, yeah, we collect field data. This is Ashley's uh, looking at a little dead animal there, and we take various um, measurements from them that goes into part of the database. The animals that uh, are going to remain in place because they're not really worth um, transporting. Sometimes it's best to just let 
nature take its course. We will uh, be painting numbers on them so that if their bodies show up somewhere else, we know that we've already responded to them. If the animals are freshly dead, which is the very exciting kind of dead, um, then we take them down to New England Aquarium where they're necropsied and then the uh, uh, tissues that are collected that booth then will become part of a uh, national and international tissue archive. And we're extremely uh, grateful that they're willing to do this because there's, as you can imagine, there's a lot of uh, capital investment in that and a level of expertise that's a bit beyond mm -hmm. what we can do. The healthy animals, this is a happy seal shaped like a little banana. Uh, this is an animal that's being well managed on the beach. You can see that people are staying away from it. This is a big issue that we have, of course, with dogs. I've, you guys have been on the beach a lot. You understand how this works. But the good news is that now the, the, uh, the central location from which the responders will come will be in New Hampshire and not down in Quincy, Massachusetts. Uh, <coughs> rehabilitation and release is the other piece that we have. This is a little guy who was, this is little hunk, oh. a big hunk. Big hunk. <laughs> I get the name wrong every time. Ah. So this we had, um, was this was the brought to us or this, yes. Yeah, so this was um, of the animals I'm sure you heard about, but this little guy um, was delivered to the science center in someone's trunk. Oh. Um, so this was what he looked like. Ashley was on the beach uh, working with him um, to see that the mother was av around with the animal. So unfortunately, um, once people start interacting with the animals and it interrupts yeah. the mother, this little fellow, you can see he's a little bit thin there. Oh. Um, uh, and eventually we probably would have taken him up to rehab because he did have some other issues associated with it, but certainly it's not always, you don't want to traumatize them, take them up to uh, rehab. Here he is oh. on his way. <laughs> um, oops, let me back up a little bit. So this is, um, they have an incredible uh, facility up there, a little uh, seal hospital there, and some of the little guys, they uh, glue uh, poker chips on their heads for identification, and he fortunately responded very, very well, and here he is down here and um, going on back to the sea. So uh, we have a, a lot of work ahead of us. We're very excited about this. It's a bit of a challenge for us uh, because I uh, and I'm not, I'm not here to ask you for money, but for us, um, this is one of the few things that we do at the Science Center where the users don't pay. The SEALs, you know, they're, they're not paying for this, uh, but uh, we have had a, a great deal of community support uh, for this. And it, oh, how did I do that? Wait a minute. I need to go back to my, we'll just go very, very quickly through this. So um, what we are hoping that we can um, work with the, town in terms of the uh, getting to know the organization so that we know who to train, who to go to for uh, the disposal of the, of the bodies on the beach, uh, and also with a, a request uh, for putting the signs, and Ashley has a sample mm -hmm. sign. Um, there it is. I don't know if we need to show that on the camera. Oh, no. And this is something that has not been done before as to... Um, put the, the uh, okay. signs up, local signs up, uh, so that people who are visiting will know when they see the animal. Mm -hmm. So uh, part we want to do the education to protect people from the animals and vice versa, and also to make sure that we get called so we can um, get the data in for the database. Okay. Questions? Could, could we have, would you have brochures and so forth? Yes. That we could put on the, in the lobby of the town office upstairs? Mm -hmm. Put them on? Yes. The yes. I, I think that's a good way to, uh, to yes. help educate the public. Yep. Uh, yes. Um, we're actually, yeah. they, they just printed them. We got the official notice on uh, Halloween. So uh, we, we, we got almost all our ducks in a row, but of course, until we actually got the authority, then we didn't. We didn't do it, but yeah. um, so we will have those ready. I talked with uh, Doc Noel about the chamber. He's very supportive yeah. of it. Yeah. I've also um, confirmed with our good colleagues at Blue Ocean Society. Right. They had been also part of the network for volunteering, and they're going to be volunteers as part of the network as well. And Blue Ocean is putting a segment. I just saw one yesterday on public local access channel. If you have something like that available, I think we could serve. Yes. Right. Yeah. I talked to Jen well. Kennedy, and she said that would be great because especially, you know, that I don't have to tell you this, but the more education that we yes. can do to help people's yeah. um, we will help the SEALs, and it would be a much better experience for everyone yeah. here. So we're very, you. we're very Thank excited you so about this. Much for and what um, you do. so I. Great. But I have to. Um, 
so we have to know who to contact about the signs or how you would like us to proceed? I, I, I think, first of all, I, I mean, I, I think it's a positive thing mm -hmm. to the extent that, that, you know, you need some sort of vote of the board or approval yes. to go ahead and do that. Would somebody like to make a motion? Also move, definitely. And Mike Plupp is seconded. with Public Works or whoever's necessary. Right, and my, my suggestion, <coughs> um, well, let's have a vote. All in favor? Unanimous. And my suggestion is you start out with, with Town Manager Welch in terms of the, the contact. Um, I'd make one other comment is I see here you write up whatever, I think you stated it, that you're working with the police and the animal control officer. Yes. Um, obviously, a lot of people are, when they encounter something like this, are not necessarily going to know about your existence. And I think when you don't know, if you don't see a sign or whatever, probably the animal control officer is going to be the first okay. one that mm -hmm. they call. So I think the fact that you're, um, you know, Working with you're working with them will 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 get people to you mm -hmm. um, at a time. I I think it's great. I've encountered two of these situations: one in my front yard, one on the beach, one the animal was alive, one it wasn't. And I think it's absolutely great that the response is coming locally as opposed to out of absolutely. Austin or yeah, yeah. whatever. Another point: you might want to make sure you contact the park system at the beach. Yes, we have um, also um, contacted parks, as has uh, the. NOAA's office in Gloucester is the National Federation, and they just finished producing all these big signs, but all their signs have the NOAA number, oh. which will then come back to us. But we did get the phone number and the authority in time to get into the state's uh, fish and game information, Good. so Good. that we will get up there, and then it will be on federal websites. Well, but now I was just thinking the information center down to Hampton Beach itself, you said Hampton has a lot of seals. so. That might be a good place yes. to disseminate mm -hmm. some of your brochures. On the okay, chamber, good, thank you. Probably. Yeah. On the chamber right. and they're and both in the same building. Yeah. Yep. Right. Good, thank Excellent. you. So we should work with you, Mr. Walsh, and... Please, um, and, okay. and we'll make sure Public Works takes care of putting up, on, at least on our beaches, your signs and making sure that's taken care of. Okay, good. Thank you thank very you. much. Yep, thank you very much. Okay, next appointment, Ann Carnaby, New Hampshire Coastal Byway Corridor Study Committee representative. Um, I believe Ann was looking to give us a um, brief update of what's going on there. Great. Did we get any more of a response, Ann? We did. That's why I'm here. Thank you for letting me speak again. Um, <coughs> the Rocky and Planning Commission's Coastal Byway Project is the group that considers the six municipalities and the Coastal Scenic Byway as one entity since we are more connected to each other then we are separate communities when it comes to many travel and tourism considerations. When I appeared before you about three weeks ago, it was to report that the resident survey was woefully under-responded to <laughs> by the residents of Hampton, and you brainstormed about how we could spread the word to get more input from our town. Um, I'm very pleased to say that Hampton has now come in second only to Rye, and ahead of all other municipalities included in this survey in number <coughs> of Excuse responses. Um, as of December 8, the respondents' total count was 444. Rye had 134. Hampton had 131 oh. responses. Okay. That's together more than half. Um, as of 12-12, the total response was over 500. Wow. As compared to the last time the survey was done a few years ago, there were only 100 plus total responses. Um, the results of this effort was successful beyond that because the organizers have decided to leave the survey available online through the spring oh. in order to gather more opinions. Um, Hopefully, we've got the survey site up on your screen. It's www.surveymonkey.com forward slash letter S forward slash NH Coastal Byway. It's up, man. Good. And I will ask to have it continue to be posted on Channel 22 in the Great. library. So thank you all for your efforts. The planning process is only as successful as there are people who provide their input, and I'm I'm really proud of what we've it done, does. and I appreciate your participation like in this. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with the uh, board's permission, I'd like to uh, slide the item under new business. Dennis Moulton. 
PE, MFC, yeah. Fisc yes. uh, civil engineers. I, I see no point in he or anyone else in his party having to hang around through our discussion of warrant articles and so on. So, um, and I assume that, that one of you is Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> That's better than hanging around for an extra hour, though, isn't it? He was enjoying <laughs> himself. happens when you give us a big pile, you get put on the agenda last. <laughs> <laughs> I'll note that next time. I'll make it to a single sheet. <laughs> uh, well, good evening. My name is Dennis Moulton. I'm a professional engineer. I work for uh, MSC Civil Engineers and Land Surveyors Incorporated out of Forest, New Hampshire. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Greg Bauer of Bauer Construction. He is the contractor who will be uh, performing the work uh, constructing this, the proposed seawall. Uh, the uh, seawall that we're uh, proposing to build is uh, located uh, adjacent to the properties 16 through 32 Nor'east <coughs> Nor Lane. Um, uh, the properties are owned by um, uh, you know, several uh, owners, of course, um, none of whom are present tonight. They, <coughs> most of them, uh, either you know, head south for the winter or <laughs> or off uh, or have other uh, obligations tonight. Unfortunately, uh, currently uh, the seawall in front of the properties well it begins as a uh, uh, sort of a randomly placed uh, rock seawall in front of uh, Mr. Solomon's property which is the uh, number 16. Mm -hmm. And then it develops into a uh, concrete seawall, which runs basically in front of the mm -hmm. next four properties. Uh, concrete seawall in, in front of that, there are s occasionally you'll, you'll see uh, mm -hmm. some rock, um, which has been placed there, you know, uh, obviously for additional road control. Proposing is to build a uh, the uh, stone uh, seawall in front of the properties. It'll be of a pyramid interlocking type construction, uh, which will hopefully provide additional stability and endurance to the wall. Uh, the proposed rock wall will extend, as I said, from Mr. Solomon's property all the way down to Mr. Lapierre's property. Uh, we'll start out uh, a little bit higher on this end so that it, it blends in with the existing seawall that was recently constructed by Mr. Bauer in front of the property uh, on number 12. Uh, so it will start off approximately elevation 21 here. Uh, it drops down to about elevation 17 and a half when it gets to this little jog. And then just continues at that elevation all the way across and then turns a corner and, and kind of dies into the sand there. Can I ask one question sure. at this point? The top of the existing concrete yes. wall that runs basically most of the length there, what elevation is that? Uh, that varies in elevation. Uh, down at this end, I would say it's about between 16 and 16 and a half. Then there's like a 60 or 6 inch drop about midway, and then so it okay. it's a little bit lower. Okay. Uh, but the proposed uh, stone sea wall will continue at the same elevation. So whereas it will be 12 to 15 inches uh, perhaps above the wall at one end, then you know, when you get that uh, six inch drop will be 18 to 21 inches mm -hmm. above. Okay, but, thank but you. But from the beach side it will look like it's all continuously one elevation. Uh, we've all, we're also proposing to construct um, several beach accesses uh, you know, from the properties, uh, basically one for each property. Uh, the first four properties will have stone uh, steps leading down to the beach. Uh, they will be <coughs> integral to the wall. They won't project further than the face of the wall. So they will be running parallel to the face of the wall down. And they will have handrails as uh, 
as uh, requested by the uh, planning board in our application there. Um, after the wall, the wall is constructed, it will of course be, uh, the sand will be you know, restored to its present level. Our intention is to bring all material in between these two properties. There will be a temporary construction uh, <coughs> entrance given there so that they can bring the material in and not have to truck it down the beach mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Uh, equipment uh, will be uh, brought onto the beach uh, from Ancient Highway. Uh, we understand that, that, that there's uh, some uh, uh, erosion protection there that will of course be restored to its uh, original state. Uh, so that the, there will be no danger of erosion during <coughs> the construction and after, after we're done. Um, I think, um, we've gone through the process. We've received uh, uh, approvals from Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, and uh, New Hampshire Department of Environmental <coughs> Services uh, uh, wetlands permit. Um, believe we've met all the conditions imposed by all those permits that we can at this point. Um, a lot of the conditions are um, imposed at the time of the, of the construction of course. Um, and I don't know if uh, Greg would like to add anything as to um, construction techniques or equipment or if you just like to open it to questions it's fine. Okay I think before um I'll go to the board as far as questions or comments. I'd like to go to um, Fred and Mark uh, first for any comments or whatever that uh, they might like to make. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, one of the things that we talked about here was to uh, happen to like your plan, by the way. Um, it solves a whole bunch of problems with some of the other plans we've seen. Oh, okay. um, we'd like to uh, request that the board take this under advisement. There are certain things that we have to do under the statute mm -hmm. uh, to make things perfect as far as the construction is concerned and as far as the use of the town property is concerned. Uh, this is an RSA 4114A process because we're building on town property and there needs to be the two public hearings plus the vote of the board. Uh, there's also some requirements in, in RSA 72 and some requirements in RSA uh, and other requirements in RSA 4111. Uh, those all have to be <coughs> taken care of before we can really mm -hmm get this in the shape where it should can just move forward and get done. So uh, we don't want to have any further complications and neither do we want the owners to have or, or the contractor to have any uh, <coughs> problems either. Mark and I have been working on this for a time now and, and uh, we're hoping that by uh, sometime in January, the end of January, we can get through this mm. depending upon the schedule of the board. Uh, but I'll, I'll refer to Mark as far as the schedule is concerned because I know his workload is uh, a little unbearable at the moment. Yeah, uh, it's good to see a plan like this in advance. There are times where the board is dealing with these things after the fact because they haven't been asked. Yep. It's nice that you're here. Appreciate Thank that. You. Makes it much easier to deal with it and people aren't caught off guard like they sometimes are mm -hmm. when people are out building things that uh, have not been permitted. Mm -hmm. um, we're of course dealing here with uh, the construction of, of uh, a, a rock wall and stairways on town property and of course no one has a right to be on town property without your permission uh, regardless of how long they have been there before with things like stairways and as you can imagine there's concerns about liability for stairways uh, control of those stairways used by the public um, and uh, we have adopted, I believe it was last week, the Selectman's regulations um, to deal with these. And the Selectman do have the authority to lease town property. And one of the things we'll be doing, Fred and I, is preparing a, a draft of a lease that will we anticipate being used in many instances. The lease will set forth the things like the insurance requirements that a homeowner would want to uh, lease to, to uh, have in place uh, indemnification obligations to hold the town harmless from any liabilities uh, in connection with the use of town property and uh, basically the lease would identify in particular what's allowed to occur um, there have been times and this is not one of them yet and obviously won't be because of the way you're approaching it where what is being represented would be built has not been built but something far more extensive 
and that's something we're trying to avoid by the use of this process. A um, couple of questions, Mark. The uh, term of the lease, what, what would that time frame be? Uh, the selectmen have the authority by uh, state RSA, RSA 7211, as adopted by the town meeting, to uh, lease town property for a term of up to five years without further vote of town meeting. And it's proposed that we would indeed um, uh, draft a lease for a five-year term. And second, could you or Fred explain, um, I don't remember the exact RSA number, but it was somewhere in RSA 72 and, and the suffix, whatever that follow, the requirement um, in terms of, of, of taxation um, when town land is leased. I mean, um, it's RSA 7223, uh, number one, 72. subsection small b in parentheses, that uh, after July 1, 1979, if you, uh, if you use municipal government property for a private purpose, that property must be taxed at ad valorem tax levels. So uh, what would happen is once the seawall is built, it would be assessed by the assessing department, uh, and there would be a tax bill issued for that every year by state law. So um, we have this one of the things we have to follow. There's no option here. It's a state requirement. The law requires us to do it. Um, it's not like having a separate piece of property because it's more or less adjoined to the existing piece of property. It goes, as I understand, it goes on that tax assessment card and it's part of the bill for the regular property. So there would be an assessment for that. And there would be a process that the assessing department goes through to establish that assessment. And that would be issued as part of the regular tax bill. And uh, the, the lease involved that I was talking about, our drafting, would include the provisions for the taxation of that, just as we did with the utility taxes that we've been through in March of this year. Right. It's making sure that the agreement contains the language op, uh, encompassing the taxation. Um, it doesn't get less complicated as we go along. <laughs> just to, to qualify, I'll, I'll speak for myself. But um, speaking for myself, we're not. Th this is a requirement of state law. Um, I'm personally not looking at this as an opportunity to, to gouge anyone on, on some additional tax or, or whatever. Just just so you know, um, most of the properties down there, the the taxable value of the land alone tends to be a billion, million two, million four. Um, whatever, not even including the, the value of the building. And the mathematical model that we use to derive the land value is a function of two factors. One is the linear feet of ocean frontage, when in this particular case is not going to change. If a property's got 50 feet of o ocean frontage, whether you build a wall out six or eight feet or whatever, it's still going to have 50 feet of ocean frontage. So that component is not going to change. What is going to change to some extent is the square footage associated with it. So for example, you may have a property that's 8,000 or 9,000 square feet based on the current parcel. Um, I suspect that what we're going to find, this is not cast in concrete, the assessor hasn't done his you know, modeling of this at this point, but it's going to add conceivably 500 or 600 feet onto an 8,000 or 9,000 or 10,000 square foot property, and that's not even going to have a linear impact in terms of the valuation of that land because the way the model is driven, a, a you know a, a one acre lot is not twice is not valued at twice what a half acre lot is, so on and so forth. So, I think that um, the bottom line is is it's something that we have to do by statute. We we <coughs> will do, but it's it doesn't appear based on what we've looked at at this point that it's going to have some huge financial impact. Uh, so, so when you say it's not a linear impact, would it square that footage. So you're saying it's not a linear impact, it's right? In other words, if, if, if for example, so if the way that the model, there's a 25 percent increase in area. There's not necessarily a 25 percent increase. Right. As a matter of fact, the the assessor and I talked about this today, and we took an example. I think of a property that was like 8,200 square feet, and we said, okay, it's 50 feet of frontage. We're we're going to add uh, 10 feet onto the wall, we're going to add 500 feet. It ended up being a 6% a, a increase in the overall square footage, but once it was plugged into the model with some of the size adjustment factors and whatever, it ended up being like between a 1% and a 
mm -hmm. um, increase on the tax Very value small. of land. Th that's uh, preliminary. I, I guess my point in all this is is that it, it's it, personally I'm not viewing it as an opportunity to gouge anyone, and it doesn't appear like it's going to have any huge financial impact. Most of these properties are paying twenty-five, thirty thousand. Yeah. as much as $45,000 a year in taxes, and uh, the impact of this is fairly small in relation um, to that. I, I think the question that's going to come from my client is when would he have a better idea of like what the impact is going to be? I, I think once we understand what the, size the, of the wall. square footage impact the is yeah. by property, then the assessor will be in a position yeah. um, to go ahead and figure that out property by yeah. property. By the size of the wall, the length and the distance. With, yeah. Again, the amount that is on town yeah. land. Right. And and that that's probably a question. How is that going to be determined? Mm -hmm. uh, the plans will determine that. Yeah. Well, well in the as built, the as built, there'll be an as built requirement. That, that yeah. If, if if it's going to be deviated from for some construction reason during the the, the construction, then mm -hmm. there needs to be an as built plan filed. Yeah. It shows that correction. Right. Before and after, you've got before plans now. You will have af after plans to show what's actually physically there, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll be based upon those after plans. Right. Uh, we, they can give you an estimate on the before plans, but it won't it won't hold because if something has to change, as you know in yeah. construction, mm -hmm. that can happen at any time. Right. So. Okay. All right. Okay. So I guess at this point um, uh, we're taking it under advisement. Are we having questions? Sure. Good. Um, the existing concrete wall, as I understand it, will stay. Yes. yes. And I see the designs that you have in here that you'll be building the blocks to to uh, be compatible with the existing concrete wall. Uh, I also see that the uh, at the request of the planning board that the four owners of the five properties have in fact submitted they have. individual right. letters of request. Right. Um, one of the questions that I would have for you, because we had quite a discussion on stairs when you were before the planning board, it looks to me on this plan that the stairs are going east-west, but we were also talking about north-south. Am I reading this wrong? How how are the stairs coming down to the left? Right. It looks to, to me left. like they're going to left to right. They're going parallel to the wall. Parallel to the wall. Okay. Yeah. She wants to know what way though. South. Well, well. It isn't north and this south, then, uh, Mary Louise. Yeah, that would be west. So for the for the most for the most part, they're they're going northeast. So it's east west. Oh, east, west. Yeah. Oh. There's okay. one there's one stair that's going southwest. Right. The wall isn't running north and south. It runs northeast well, and southwest. Well, it's rough, right? But I'm saying the steps down there, with the wooden steps down there, go east west. Right. Well, wow. sort of. More southwest, north northwest by southeast. I'm trying to. Uh, Here's stage. north right here on the map. Because what? Here's yeah. north. And it's diagonal. Oh. Well, I can see that. Now, there's one that shows the stair in front of it. I think that's a very clever design, having it up against there. Yeah. That would be less concrete right. wall. So this wall. is another wall. No. We're, we're, we're hoping yeah. it's going to. So it's going to. This is your concrete gonna, wall. It's going to butt out. The step part yep. of the blocks yep. will butt yep. out. So basically, walls. go north like south. That. You'll, you know, you'll right? have two walls. You'll have your wall in front of the concrete wall. Right. And, and then, then you'll have, have the your steps. steps. And then you'll have a wall in front of that coming Outside down. Outside of the steps. Right. Yeah. It'd be like a sideways stairwell. Right. Down the side of a building. So you're going to have the blocks. Uh, to the east of this of the block stairwell, right. in lieu of a railing, you'll have that basically to hold on to when you're going up the steps. It's right here. Have it's right there. There's your stairwell. You'll have the, right the stone on one. See how the, you see all this? Yeah. This is wall. all covered up in sand. Right. This wall isn't uh, revealed. All this wall you won't see. You only see about this much. So there will only be a couple of steps. There'll be probably. Yeah. Five or six steps to come down, but you see this detail here? Yeah. That's your sand elevation. Right. This is all base for the wall, the bulk to right. hold the wall up. What we're talking about is liability and people climbing up those stairs, which is what we had the big discussion on at the planning board. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to figure out if somebody is walking up the beach and says, oh boy, that looks nice. I think I'll walk up there. Well, if they're coming up the stairs. What we've what done in Rye is we've had them paint the liability issues. And you can, you can do that within the lease. 
You can do that with I don't the know. Yeah, okay. she is, is it protects the homeowner? Because there aren't that many, it's not that much of a public right. beach up at that end, but nevertheless, the liability oh, be somebody, of having yeah. But if it's painted steps. private, no right. trespassing, yeah. and somebody goes up there and gets hurt, right. it's on them, not the homeowner. Okay. With the, now, the, we the just had a situation yeah, also with 1042 Ocean Boulevard, where the plans right. that were presented to the planning board were not complied with, and they ended up with a sort of a circular staircase built into the wall. The new one? Yeah. That was not put in the way it was designed. I know, that's what I'm saying. And it should be taken down and done right. Well, we'll yeah. get there. We'll but get there eventually. Now, one other question. The riprap that's there now, yeah. uh, what's going to happen to it? To whom the, do those blocks or stones belong? Are those... Homeowners. Town property because yeah. they're there on town land, or what? What's going to happen with the riprap? Going to reuse them. Stones oh. have value. We'd like to reuse the rocks. What? Yeah. What, what we can reuse, we'd like to reuse. Okay. Uh, some of it may, may not be reusable, but You're probably going to use it all for base chinkers, fillers. Use some for fill, yep. etc. Those people pay yeah. to put which is okay. Which is usually what happens. Right. They okay. try to use them again. Well, I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a question, Mr. Chairman. I'm trying to look at this diagram and trying to figure out where on this diagram right there the property line is in relation to where you're building the wall it follows the concrete wall yeah. it doesn't go northeast no. and north and south it, mainly it please where's the property line like this property ends where what is at the, the, at the face of the concrete which, wall which which line? the concrete wall right here the concrete sea wall see which, that wh see which that one? fine line which one right there the really fine one yep. this one right here yes. right above the six Yep. It has little two dots yep. on. Yep. It. Okay, and you're you're gonna we're gonna come out. Now, where is the existing concrete wall now? It's it's right there where it's clear. It's so it's on the back side. It's on the prop. It's on the private property. Yeah. Right. In relation to this little dot, right? The and the new one's gonna be the rocks right here. Yes. It's gonna be on on the town property. Yes. This is the top of the of the old oh, okay. where it's clear, where it's white. Oh, okay. This is the new. This is the existing. What's there now? The riprap, the, the boulders that are just right. up against. They're against the wall. Right. The wall comes up and it's got a curve at the top. Yeah. And what we're going to do is follow this line and not succeed the toe. Okay, I thought. Yep. Yeah. In the in the stairwells, you see how these are coming down vertical? Mm -hmm. They're going to come down sideways. Oh, I got that part. I was just concerned where okay. the property line was. So it's one that has the two little dots in there. Yep. Rather than that big fat sucker, whatever big that. Big fat is. sucker. <laughs> the top, top of your wall. Oh, the top of the wall. <laughs> okay. So the the existing so concrete wall yeah, is actually on the private property right now. Right. Yes. All of it is. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what you want to add will end up being on town property. Right. Which these rocks here are already. Gotcha. Okay, that's what I, when I was looking at this, I was looking at this last night, I said, where is it, where is everything? That's the only mm -hmm. question I had. Thank you. Okay. There's, there's one advantage, actually, to the way you're configuring the stairs, because if you configure them east-west, the ocean would have an opening yes. there that's why we did to it go though. through. Right. So with the north-south right. configuration of yes. the stairs, you've got less potential damage. And then you have protection coming down the stairwell right. for the ocean to hit and roll back. Right. So the treads don't get lifted as they were if they were looking right at you. Right. right. Yeah. So what are you going to build the steps out of? The same kind of heavy duty material? All granite blocks. All blocks. And they won't move easily. They're going to be tied into the wall on the back uh -huh. and on the front. Yeah. They're not, we're not going to build a stairwell and just set them in. Yeah. We're going to integrate them into the wall. Yeah. Okay. So those treads are going to go that those treads are going to go into the seawall yeah. yeah. and the seawall will be sitting on the treads. Yeah. Oh wow. Excellent. So it's going to be pretty well pretty secure. And the other thing is the time of construction will be off season, we're assuming. We're um, open to begin. Before. We're shooting we're shooting for March, but I've got two yeah. seawalls right now in Rye that I'm starting in January. It's good that you're busy. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is the upside to that. Depending on the weather, yeah. as you know, we have right. to work with the weather, yeah. the nor'east um, storms, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. the snow. Yep. If we have a bad winter and I finish the two walls in rye, what's the allowable time, September at some point, to come back out on the beach? September 15th to April 15th. Right. Yes. It's either going to be March, April, but I'm not going to start something and not and run out of time right. because of the season coming in. Right. I want to do it and start on one end and go right to the mm -hmm. other end and finish it. Good. Mm -hmm. so we're gonna, we'd like to have two great big excavators. We're going to dig the, all the rocks out, lay them on the beach, not way out on the beach, but in a working area, mm -hmm. put the fabric in, start putting the rocks back in, and start on one end and go. Yep. Good. 
good. It's and, and you're going to be, while you're working on it, you're going to be storing your equipment up at the end near 32 Norris Lane? Well, yeah. I'd like to store the equipment during the day, at night, over to here, right. where yeah. it doesn't get as much water. Right. Yeah. And up we did breach. Danny Hopeful's last yeah. time I was here. Yeah. yeah. We had to walk, we, had, we, we could leave the excavator there because it was the summertime, yeah. but in the winter it's kind of risky. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is, is we had to take the rocks from um, Ancient Highway and truck them down in the cat truck. Right. This way we have this gentleman here, we're taking down his porch, it's going to be a quicker access for the right. rocks, but we don't have the access to bring the excavator up on these pieces yeah. of property without building a huge boulder ramp. Mm -hmm. So when we do have good days, we'll leave the excavator right here, but when we know there's a nor'east to come and we're going to yeah. see if we can bring it over here to the we salt marsh. Up at the breach. Up at the breach. Okay. With a There's no entrance here, though. I, I know. There's no. I know. The only entrance. It's all filled in. He's down at um, past the beach pub. North, on North the, on the And that's a long walk with an excavator yeah. every day. <laughs> right. so okay. I'm Anything else uh, from the board? I think what we're saying is we'll take it under advisement. Yeah. You'll be working with some combination of, of the town Thank manager, you. the town attorney, and uh, mm -hmm. people who work for them. And um, I, I don't think we don't anticipate a need for you to need to come back. Um, to a meeting, I think it would be more or less uh, a case of, of yeah. town manager and the town attorney coming to us at a future meeting, on. say, right. saying we've yeah. we've worked out these details and we're looking for your approval. Thank you for letting us. Uh, uh, a question that occurred to me: uh, at the end of the five-year lease, what happens? It can be renewed. Renew 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 it renews. Have to renew it. Yeah. So, so it has. So, so someone has to come back and apply and. No. Well, it'll be a different board of selectmen by then. It won't be a then. construction situation. Oh, right. there'll, there'll be have to be a reapplication, yeah. yeah. But right. it's 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 well, we have yet to work that particular provision yeah. out how that's going to happen. Okay. The, wall the most we can do is yet. anybody can do is five years. Okay. Yeah. At this point. So I just, I mean, I know my yeah. clients will ask me, and I'll say, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah not all right. Like okay. Only not our intention to do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Okay, yes, next item on the agenda, approval of December 2nd minutes. Page one. See ya. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five. Page six. Page six, bottom third line from the bottom. Starts with for the taxpayer. Work he has done on a tax rate, 2013 rate of two of $7.04. It's confusing the way it's written. It should be a comma there. And then state the proposed items for 2014, not including this warrant article result in a tax rate of $7.86. Page seven. Page eight, page nine. Ah, uh, yes, page nine. At the very bottom, and I'll be honest, I didn't remember this, but the, the minutes remind me. At the very bottom, it says the board requests an email clarifying what's going on. I haven't seen any email that clarifies what's going on. Mike, I'm, I'm not following where on the page. Here. Bot very bottom, bottom, very bottom yeah, of very page bottom. nine. It says the board requests an email. It's the very last sentence on the page. The board requests an email clarifying oh, yeah. what's going on in relation to the nine. The question I have actually is $109,000. I haven't seen an email clarifying this. I received an email. I, I to be honest with you, I, I, I think the whole board received it, or I would have forwarded it to the board. But I saw an email from Keith. Keith was asked to give you a full email. It was. I would say it was either Thursday or Friday, of of last week, Mike. I'll go look at that. And I'll forward it to the board if, if I didn't pick up on the fact that it was just me that was copied on it or whatever. I don't know. I'll double check, but I don't remember seeing it. I'll, I'll look. But I, I did miss a couple emails this time, I'll be honest. I had a little flurry. Yeah. yeah. A little flurry there. I might have missed it. I just want to bring it to Didn't you think it was sent out then to everybody? He was asked to do that, and I'm no, pretty he, sure he, he did. No, it. I know he did. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did too. Last week. Okay. Page 10. That, all that didn't change the minutes. You were just, just no. I was just it. curious about right. the external page effect. ten, page eleven. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Wait, Mike, did you second? Mm -hmm. Seconded by uh, Slipman Pierce. All in favor? I'm abstaining. I'm Four zero one with uh, yeah. 
Slentman Woolsey abstaining in protest state. Oh, protesting again? <coughs> okay. Town manager report, Fred. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. The uh, dedication of the Hampton Beach Fire, fire Substation uh, was held on t uh, Thursday, December 12th. The Uptown Fire Station headquarters will be dedicated this Tuesday, December 17th at 4 to 6 p.m. That's exactly one year after the groundbreaking <laughs> to start the construction on that station. Uh, in fact, they're both one year after the, the date of the construction, the uh, uh, groundbreaking. Right to the, the most recently amended version of the town's purchasing policy has been reissued to all departments as of Friday, December 13th. Mm -hmm. That's when we shipped it out. Uh, work continues on the Church Street pump station. The contractors have been working to install the 24-inch PVC piping systems for the grinder manhole tie-ins, the new, the new grinder manhole. <laughs> Exterior plumbing rough-in continues. Electrical rough-ins uh, continue within the structure. Concrete and rebar installations continue in the wet well and block filler and uh, primer for are being applied. I've instructed the Public Works Department to have the old street lights, that's the aluminum ones on the poles, uh, on Ashworth Avenue, A and B streets removed. Mm -hmm. As yeah. you know, we installed new street lights down there uh, yeah. per the agreement with the precinct, and they are in operation. We've troubleshot them. They're, they're operating full time now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason to be paying for the other street lights that are yeah. up on the electrical poles, so we've, I've ordered them to be removed. Good. Public Works is arranging that. You look aren't like they, you got a question. I don't, aren't they powered by the electric company? Can we go in there and just remove them? Uh, no, we can't. The power company has to remove them. <laughs> Thank you. So um, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's been a long time since I've climbed a pole and take down, <laughs> <laughs> take it down a street. Especially a live one, right? Yeah. Live or dead. doesn't make any difference. It's <laughs> a long time. Uh, residents who have motor vehicles to register during the month of December should seek to complete that task early to avoid the long lines at the end of the month that will be longer due to the holidays. Also, please remember the town clerk's office closes at 11.30 on Friday afternoon, or uh, Friday mornings, excuse me. And those lines tend to get very, very long uh, the following Monday. Um, see, we address the purchasing policy. Uh, I have... Uh, sent to the board um, in your mailboxes a uh, copy of the regulation of the non-budget expenditures and a letter to go out to the department head just for the board's review. Mm -hmm. In case you have questions, please give them to me so that I can, I can tune that accordingly. Uh, we want to make sure everybody gets the information and they understand it completely so there's no problem. Uh, the other thing I have is that we had taken in insurance uh, bids for property and liability coverage for the town, uh, property, liability, and workers' compensation coverage for the town. That coverage has to begin, and we have to do something to award the contract. Uh, so I, I, I would like, with the chairman's permission, to bring it up. It was supposed to be on the agenda tonight, but for some reason it slipped off. Uh, I guess it's just too many things coming up at one point in time during the end of the year. We need to do that. Uh, there's a $104,000 deduction for the budget at stake here, uh, or a 63 or $64,000 increase, either one, depending on how you want to, how you want to look at this and award it. Uh, the recommendation is to award it to the uh, property liability uh, trust and the uh, and workers' compensation trust uh, at the former municipal association. They're a low bidder. Taking this year's bid into this year's cost into consideration, uh, and what we paid versus what the bid is, there's a hundred and four thousand dollar decrease in round figures. Uh, that does not include the, I believe, it's thirty eight thousand dollar refund that's coming to mm -hmm. the town, which is in process now. So, but we need to do that so the budget committee can handle the budget tomorrow night. Yes, I have a. Go ahead. Uh, I, I just like to. Um, Clarify. We, we we discussed this. I believe it was at the last meeting. Yes. As a matter of fact, Fred and I had a conversation <coughs> today, and I, I think there was a consensus at the time that we 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 would go with the property liability trust. However, there was no motion, right. and there was right. no vote, and, and we need that. Just just to confirm, the amount um, of the property liability trust I'm showing is seven hundred and eighty-seven thousand six hundred and forty-eight dollars. That sounds very familiar. 
even with all the figures running around in my head with budgets. Um, I just have to find the right piece of paper. Well, actually, um, I think that chart that showed. Uh, ah, you've got the chart. By, okay. by, by making the motion, I believe what you would be doing is uh, we, we have already paid through July 1 for liability insurance. For workers' comp insurance, it has December 31st. Property liability in, uh, trust, which provides that, uh, runs currently on a calendar year basis, but they want to shift that to the same other basis of uh, July right. 1. Uh, by the motion would be uh, to uh, go with property liability trust for the six month period of January 1, 2014 to June 30, 2014. Uh, that will, by the way, give time, I believe, for the current suit in uh, at the Supreme Which Court to, to carry through. Yeah, right. And I believe the prudent thing would be to see how that carries forward. I'm fairly confident that uh, with the stay that's in place on the hearing officer decision that would have required the property trust to pay $17.1 million back to the mm -hmm. health, health trust, uh, by December 1, 2013, would that stay in place and with the time period that it will take for that, the Supreme Court to rule on the subject, that we are, uh, are, we are safe with that coverage for workers' comp through June 30, 2014. But I, I wouldn't want to uh, extend it out any further at this point. Okay, fine. I understand what you said. But what are you looking for in the way of a motion? Are you looking for a motion on the workers' comp to award it <coughs> only through June 30th of yes. 2014? Yes. And is the amount of that, um, are we to assume it's one half of the 546167 mm -hmm. that we were quoted? Uh, the figure, I believe, is at the top of uh, for $276,029.42. Yeah. Yeah. This to be taken out of the 2014 budget. This yes. to be yes. 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 To be. What was yes. the number again, Mark? Two hundred seventy-six thousand twenty-nine dollars forty-two okay. cents. Oh, so the, the sheet that we were given yes. before, I just came out two seventy-three. So we'll go with your number if that's. I I will so move. And on the property liability insurance, what it, what are you proposing? We're already paid. Are, are you proposing to approve anything where we've already paid through June 30th of 2014? I, be I believe you're, you've already paid, so my, my advice would be to stand pat, stay tuned. Okay, mm -hmm. so, so in terms of our approval, all we are approving is the workers um, six months on workers' comp right. through June 30th, roughly in the amount of $276,000. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And um, uh, Ms. Green and uh, the town manager have attended a, a discussions regarding this. I don't know if you have any further input on that subject. I, I do, and I don't uh, want to step on the town manager's traffic, uh, but we did receive another bid from Primex. Is that correct, Mr. Mark? That is correct, sir. And they are deficient in what coverages that you know are aware of now? They are no. deficient that we are aware of in uh, uh, insurance to the legal department. Do you and know. And There's an your, your course of action that you recommend going forward in the next few months is to? We have um, an agreement with Primex that should uh, our current insurance cease to cover us, that we can at the beginning of any month st have them step right in and take over on both those coverage areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be looking to put out a bid in the first <coughs> of January for, um, to, to protect the legal department in all areas that Primex does, does not now mm -hmm. protect them. So that if we have to go there, uh, we will have that contingent bid as well. Wonderful. And you have, uh, um, are you perhaps going to schedule a meeting with Primex to do, to uh, bring them on board, discuss? We the are. Uh, that has to be done right after the first of the year, uh, so that we are all in the same wavelength, so to mm -hmm. speak. Wonderful. Thank you, sir. Okay. So Mary Louise has moved. Yeah. Do we have a second? No, a second. That's for the. Uh, uh, workers comp work okay. workman's comp for six months at uh, 276 0 42 okay all in favor to be dispersed out of the 2014 budget right all in That's favor yep. unanimous okay now there's a, a second but related mm -hmm. issue 
in which um, information needs to go to the budget committee, mm -hmm. um, advising them of, of what yeah. is anticipated to be budgeted. And I believe, um, unless the number's been tweaked in, uh, a little bit, because <coughs> I think we have to assume, for example, on the property and liability trust that we will be making payments out of the 2014 budget that will carry into the first six months of 2015, much like we've been doing right along. Right. So I believe that the actual budget um, that the Budget Committee is going to want to approve and is going to be an identical number in our default budget, mm -hmm. okay, it's going to change, okay, is something, unless, you know, you had a couple of thousand dollar difference there, but it is going to be roughly about the 787000 um, for the combination of the two. We may not consummate an agreement immediately mm -hmm. on the workers' right. comp for the, the July money. through you December the period, but we need to have right. that in the budget. Yeah. Are you shaking your head? No, I was just talking to him. Okay. <laughs> and and what what I'm looking at here again is a number of yeah. seven hundred and eighty seven thousand yeah. six hundred and forty eight for the combination of the two. There's a notation here that the decrease from 2013 is $104,000, yeah. 051. Yes. But that's a slightly different number than, than um, what the 2014 budget is. The current right. 2014 right. budget and 2014 default, I believe they're identical, mm -hmm. are a little bit different right. than what the 2013 budget was. Correct. Yeah. And so they do need that figure. Yeah. So yep. I am assuming that that figure it's going to come from Mike Schwarzer is going to identically go into the default and recommended Both. to the budget yeah. committee what is going to be roughly the 787,648. Right. Okay. 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 Um, Fred's report. Um, he had brought up an issue about the policy on non budgeted expenditures, yes, and sir. he yeah, we should have seen this or whatever. Um, I just have one comment on the letter <laughs> itself. That being the last sentence states, the finance department will be instructed to notify any submitter of a non-budgeted expenditure of the hold on processing until the selectmen have reviewed the expenditure in question. Okay, I believe that should clarify to what our policy was in that it is only non-budgeted expenditures that propagate into future years. Yeah. It wasn't all non-budgeted expenditures. No, no. And that's you're but correct. We, yeah. we should say that. Okay. Okay. No. Here, because we're not. You know, if somebody's got a thousand dollars budgeted for an item, and and and, and, and they want to spend, you know, two thousand or buy another item. That's not what yeah. we're talking about. We're right. talking about things whether it's wage increases or whether it's contractual commitments mm -hmm. that aren't only in the year where they make the expenditure, but yeah. in the case of a wage roll in it. So that it's should be clarified, or, or people yeah. are yeah. going to really be um, upset Crazy. and scratching their heads. Um, the, the second comment, I, the policy is attached to it. The policy is what I remember. Um, we approved after Phil had made a um, recommendation right. on one change. H however, I would um, have an added recommendation on this policy to the extent that it applies to wages, that the um, personnel policy be amended to reflect this policy. It, this needs to be put to somewhere. Guys. It affects wages. It should be contained in the per yeah. in the personnel policy. So I would um, make a motion that we um, instruct Wanda, um, as her time allows, to make amend change. the personnel policy yeah. to reflect the implications on wages in this policy. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Um, I think that covers it in Fred's report. Oh, I have one question for Fred's report, though, when okay. you're done. Sorry. What is a grind, grinder hole cover, or whatever the hell it is? There's, in the past, what we've had is we've had a trash rack that's attached to the incoming line that separates large materials okay uh, so that they don't end up being stuck into the system by the, with, the, with the pumps okay the grinder ba basically grinds everything up into nothing oh I so get things you. will pass and there's there's, there's less to uh, to clog the system I, I uh, knew I'd heard that term before I just couldn't remember what it was thank you instead of having a sieve and having it get all clogged up yeah it's a giant hamburger grinder yeah. so yeah if you want to put it that yeah, <laughs> not for the sandwich, no. Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple for Fred. 
on the Church Street pump station, Fred, now that the weather has turned really rather nasty cold, uh, it looks like it's going to continue for a while. Is that going to have any impact on what they're trying to do with the concrete and everything? No, they're working inside, they're which working. is which is covered now. Okay. Uh, the, uh, not all the windows and doors are in, but, but they are covered and secured so they can keep the interior of the building warm. So it's sufficiently sheltered so yes. they can continue yep. with the work. Yeah. It's a good thing they got as much done as they did. Um, on the... Um, you're mentioning the registrations of motor vehicles. I think it would be good with the holidays coming up, especially since both Christmas and New Year's fall on Wednesday. Is there an anticipated town office closing for either the day after Christmas, the day after New Year, the day before? Has there been any holiday scheduling put together? The holiday scheduling is we're off Christmas Day and we're off New Year's Day. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Well, well I that doesn't mean individual employees or we'll probably more time. employees will right. take yeah. vacation. Yeah. Or right. Whatever, but I'm but talking about the town office being open, so people. But those are those are all. Mm -hmm. I think the, on, the only time every year the town office holds a, a party for the employees, uh, the employees hold a party for themselves, uh, which I, every year the selectmen are invited to, and I believe that is going to be when? Thursday. Thursday? Okay. This week? This week. Uh, this week. Uh, It'll be from, from okay. 12 to 1.30. I just don't want people out there wondering oh, you know, no. whether they should come or not. No, and my really final thing uh, on the uh, December 15th Seacoast Sunday there was a very scary article oh, yeah. on the uh, dangers to oh. firefighters um, facing higher risk of cancer with all the different pollutants and the different uh, contaminants that they are exposed to in the process of fighting fires. I asked Fred before we sat down if our health trust has any type of remediation program, education program, uh, any uh, any kind of assets that we can turn to for the firefighters to try to assist them in uh, in helping to keep their uh, their health uh, while they're doing this very risky job. They do, and so does the Workers' Compensation Trust. Uh, the Department of Labor also has some resources available, which they make available to cities and towns. And uh, from time to time, we use all of them. And you feel that we are taking advantage. Uh, the chief takes it much advantage of those things as he possibly can, given his schedule. Excellent. So okay. The only other thing I had, Mr. Chairman, was that, and I don't know if the board's been notified of this yet, but Mr. Lassard's arrangements uh, yes. uh, for his wake will be at St. Elizabeth's uh, in, in Seabrook uh, on the beach for the 17th from 2 to 4 and 7 to 9. For the that's, wake. that's tomorrow, Tuesday. Yeah. And then the funeral will be on uh, Wednesday the 18th at Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal here in Hampton. At, at, that's at 10 a.m. We understand the internment will be private, family only, yeah. uh, and everybody else will be invited to go to some other location and the family will join them there. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. So that's at 10 a.m. on the 18th. 10 a.m. On, on, on the 18th on Wednesday. Yeah. Just so you all have mm -hmm. the schedule as we've been given it. Right. Wake us tomorrow, funeral is Wednesday. And that's Seabrook, though. Yeah. It's um, uh, yeah. it's a church that's at the um, beach corner of um, Lowell Street, which is five or six streets to the south of um, where the traffic uh, light, the light is. And the Hooks of Street Light. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Old business. 2014 Warren Articles. Um, if, if this were a month ago, I would suggest that we just skip over them, given the hour. But as an alternative, I'd, I'd like to suggest that we try and move through them as expeditiously as, as possible. Um, similar to the approach we've taken thus far, we'll, we'll just go through in some sort of chronolo chronological order. Um, I've got a couple to, to start, and if I go to one that you've got one lower than that, bring it up and we'll hit that one first. Um, first thing that, that Mike had, had brought up an issue last week that we should start um, trying to quote unquote finalize articles or whatever so we had some sort of an indication of what's finalized or whatever and I'd just like to suggest and make a request um, that Christina on this index page um, just create another column that essentially has got a the ability to put a date there it'll simply be the date that it's finalized yeah. and uh, and and that will be our, our our indication of what's finalized then we can start the process next week of yeah. finalizing them yeah. I'd like for, for if Mark and 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 Fred could um, take that list of Christina's and indicate which ones they believe are 
are finalized. For example, there there are going to be ones like police forfeiture and so on, which I suspect are already finalized. I would right. look to some combination of Mark and Fred to say, yep, I've reviewed you that language. And you it's, mean by um, finalized that they're ready for us to take a vote on them and we're ready to pick them apart or what? Ready to go on the warrant, basically. Re or ready that, to, or ready that we ready voted to, on them. Ready to go on the warrant. And, and yeah. Everything's complete, including your votes. Okay. Including okay. your votes. Okay. Um, so that's one. In terms of articles, and I, I really didn't have much, and I don't think that there were a lot of changes between last week and this week. On page um, 9, Article 16 is the first one that I hit anything on, and I would make two changes that were discussed tonight with Keith. One is the, um, that's the high street culvert. The sum goes from 125000 to 175000 Right. And the um, third line from the bottom, the um, amount in offsetting revenues from grants goes from 62500 to 87500 I just basically maintain the same percentage. This was there. The next article that I hit is on page 10, the, the human service agencies. And Fred, I know, informed me, I'll ask him to fill in a few details here, that he had communication with somebody from Child and Family Services, they understand our intention yes. um, to remove them from the selectmen's list of 19 or 20 articles, and they will have, they do have a plan of having somebody who is a Hampton resident show up at the okay. deliberative session requesting that the um, amount in their petition war and article increase from five from yeah. one thousand to six thousand dollars. Can I also I think we can Mr. Remove Chairman, on that on that same article, because you're talking about it. Yeah. Right, can I finish? This well, one. you're talking about it. I know. I'm not moving on to another article. Okay? You, you don't like being uh, interrupted, and I like to finish as well. Okay? I didn't know you were. I thought you were finished with well, that. Well, no, that's article. why I'm. Uh, we can go back and forth three right, more right, times. Right, that's right, why right, I'm sorry, sorry. So, at any rate, I believe that we can remove. Yes. Um, the guy that doesn't like to be interrupted is interrupting. Mm, <laughs> I like that. Um, child and family services yes. can be removed. Yes. yes. I have a okay. margin. We have an right. agreement on that. Okay? Yeah. And then my second. Uh, issue or question is the status of, of Crossroads because that was one that was up in the air and said you were communicating we, with them. We, we have met with them. Uh, we met with all three principals that were involved uh, between Crossroads and the, uh, the other two agencies. Uh, I have since had communication with uh, State Department of uh, Welfare along with, uh, that's HHS, yeah. um, and along with uh, through, through Chris Munns. And I sent an email out to Chris today. I'm waiting for his response um, to see whether he's satisfied or not. And the intention at the moment is to remove that. Okay, okay. but that's still a work in process. And, it is. and your recommendations, we leave them on for the time being, for at least for another week. Okay. Yeah. Mike, did you have something else yeah. on that article? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, not on that article. But you were talking about the uh, child and family services, and I was wanted to point out, if you will and maybe the town manager or maybe even uh, our attorney uh, that the article A submitted here is not going to fly and uh, this not number 38 is not going to fly I don't think the way it's worded so I think they're going to somebody's trying to give them a nudge and it's going to be changed not only the value amount but the wording is going to have to be changed. We discussed that last week. Oh, yeah. I know but we were talking about the value we're talking about the wording has yes, to be changed. Yes, raise and appropriate needs to be in there. I know we but can, can we make sure that that I, happens? I did, I did talk to the executive director. Yes. Okay, good. And I explained to her what the problems were with, with the factual way it's drawn yeah. mm -hmm. and that we would provide them with a copy of past articles and amendments okay. and yeah. they would have to make their own up from it if they would give it to us when they finished with it yeah. that we would look at, at it and review it and perhaps offer a critique at that time and then we coordinate that with the moderator so he'd know what was going on yeah. okay anything else Mike uh, no that was just it I just want to make sure that we cover that yep okay. that group article uh, well I wanted to make sure that Fred was going to fall through <coughs> that yeah. Yeah. oh yes article Are we pulling that article 21 um, I don't know if we're ready to, to pull it tonight, but it, it, it just seems like communication is one way. And it, we, we, make, we make suggestions that we'd like to see the priorities and the funding and whatever. And, and the way it stands now, I would not go along with it. I'll, I'll make another comment. Fred and I had a conversation yes, on this Friday or yes. whatever. <coughs> but like, like 
for example, this does not delineate. It says ninety thousand dollars in the three items, yeah. and it doesn't tell what right. what's for what. Right. I went down to Eaton Park. There's there's only one field, it's softball field, I believe, it's baseball, softball, whatever. That that split. It's got I think nine poles on it. The poles are like telephone pole type poles. The 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 fixtures may be um, basket cases or whatever, and there may be wiring. But it, it, it's still, there needs to be some sort of an estimate because it sure doesn't look like $90,000 or $70,000 or whatever. So we, we really, well, well I think. I mean, they're not complete. I, I, don't, I don't think it, it's going to cost us anything if we pull them. We've got four weeks, a week from now or two weeks well. from now, but I think the message needs to go I back. And I have talked to, uh, to Recreation. I have asked for certain things. So you're going to gonna rework 21 then? Uh, I haven't seen them as of yet, but I have asked for those to be done. If, we, they, if we, they're we, not here, they, they're going to die. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, that's um, 21. What was the other one you mentioned? Mr. The, I feel I feel the same way on 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 the parking lot sign. Okay, 20. Unlike 21, which is funded from the um, the, the direct fund that's built from the 20 percent of parking revenues, mm -hmm. um, 22 does have tax impact, and it, it unless I'm missing something, it's 30 30 thousand dollars for for three signs, and mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to an article that replaces the signs, but ten thousand dollars a sign is. So that's yeah, my whatever. feedback on that one. See um, next one, we talked about it briefly when Keith was here, 26, the oh. wastewater system. Right. Yes. Fee. We, we'd really like to, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know if that one's just going to come from Mark and Chris next week and be clear and, and be done or, I mean, it's complicated we is where my concern done. is. So yeah. I'd sure like to see a version of this um, next week as we discuss. Mm -hmm. It's going to um, come whether it's clear <laughs> or something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be in legalese. Watch it. Um, <laughs> 27, Engineer. kind of the same situation, yeah. the solid waste ordinance. We yeah. need to, we've, we've only right. got four weeks left, and yeah. if we see it ne next, if we see both those next week, there's only three weeks um, subsequent to that. Right. Um, entertainment ordinance, um, we've gone over that. We had input tonight. Um, I believe the end result is we're going forward with that. Um, the only thing that, that I would comment is it's my intention to work with Mark, and we've already discussed, to try, as I mentioned to some of the people here, to try and come up with a, a much cleaner definition of what is outside entertainment, because mm -hmm. I think that that's one yeah. thing that is open there. And um, that's I it. I just want to move the TIF back right after the money articles. I think what we said is, is we do that as we get to the end after right. things have shuffled and, and I, just don't, want to get I don't necessarily agree with it, but I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you either. <laughs> not? Nope. Mr. Chairman, don't, we don't talked do last week on uh, number 35. Tax and financing. Yeah, that's the tip yeah. one. Tip. Yeah, that's, that's it. What, yeah. Okay. But we basically said we've got other movement that we're going to see. So rather than yeah. shuffling it and shuffling it again, let's just defer the yeah. shuffling until yeah. everything else looks soon. solid. Now, may I pin yeah. down um, Select and Wilson okay. and ask Thank about you. um, your private yeah. petition warrant article, if mm -hmm. any, that you are uh, leading the effort on? Yeah. Anything you want to share with the board? At this point, it is getting late. Yeah. Well, we have till January 14th. Right, it, will be, <laughs> it, will, it will be submitted. Miss Christmas next week in the holiday. Yeah, it will be submitted. So what are you going to get for a Christmas present, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, just, just drop I noticed I spared you an intense peroration during the public hearing or subsequent to it. But I will explain. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item, preliminary review of year-end spending and um, encumbrances. Yes. Um, I put this on the agenda Thank you. I'm sorry. mainly because I looked at it and, and I think we'd like to try and get through this and approve it next week and I said, oh my God, there's an awful lot of items, some are complicated, there may be questions and I wanted to give the selectmen an opportunity to ask questions such that if, you know, what is, what is this, why do we need it, whatever, um, that, that if those answers aren't available from Fred off the top of his head, they will be um, by next Monday when we're asked to well, approve these. Are, are you willing to accept a, a motion because I'd like to move the fire department? Uh, no. I, 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 I don't want to... I, I don't we will do this next week. Yes, I don't want to do it until Mike Schwartz is here okay. and we understand what, what some of the that. forecast the information are okay. is okay. And, and that. So, right. Does anybody have any specific questions on this? No, I'm just, um, one thing I was going to make a comment about when we get there, if we're going to do it next week, I'll save it for then. There's some things on here I just can't figure out why they weren't in the budget. 
so I'll just, I'll just drop it right there. Okay, I, I have a couple of comments, and it may go to what you brought up, but I'll make them. They're not so much specific questions. Um, first thing, Fred, is a question for you. Are, are you recommending that we approve all of these items? Are, are, are there any items that you don't approve of? Or what, what is your... Well, I, I can tell you, um, and, I, and I went through these very, very quickly, but uh, in public works, for instance, uh, out of the budget this year, we cut out the, uh, the expensive tire changing machineries and, and operations and the diagnostic equipment and so on and so forth. Um, we cut it out? We did. We cut it out of the budget. Why? Uh, they couldn't give a good reason why they wanted it. This year, well, meaning 2013 well, or 2014? Well, it's 2014, the budget okay. we just finished. Oh. Okay. Uh, you need an explanation of why you want something, yeah. and we didn't get one. Uh, so it was cut. Uh, they're asking for it here. Yeah. So I, I think that's something, frankly, if we're going to discuss this next week, I want to have all three here. Oh, okay. So they can answer your questions directly as to what the methodology and thinking was. So, so what are you saying? That, that there are no items that you are not in favor of, but that there are items that you have questions on that haven't been answered yet? I, I think that they need to explain why they want some of these things. I understand the police department, the uniforms for the three different vendors, mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. because there's not enough money to give the, uh, uni the new uniform expenses that they need for the new mm -hmm. part-timers are in the process of hiring yep. in this yep. year's budget. Yep. So that needs to happen. Uh, ammunition, Chief and I have not talked about that. But yep. The only thing he said he needed was the uniforms. Yep. He had to have that. Yep. Um, the fire chief, uh, he and I went over the uh, the equipment, and uh, basically he said he had to have three things: yeah. the uh, the extractor, the dryer, That's and the six wheel ranger, the absolutely. Polaris ranger. Yeah. Uh, that one's completely gone and needs to be replaced. The other two take care of the turnout gear they have and so forth, and will not destroy it mm -hmm. while it's being cleaned. It will save some time and money for the town in the long run. Yes. Public Works, um, I asked the same question, with Keith. And he reduces 125,005 to 50,005. Mm -hmm. You can see the the items that are there. The stump grinding, for instance, that's something that the board had directed him to do earlier in the year. That money was available later to get it done. He doesn't have the money. Uh, the pipeline camera, camera ing, and the subsurface borings are both Exeter Road. Something you wanted him to do. Uh, the downtown drainage project is is uh, the remainder of those funds. And the uh, the next item, which deals with signs, yes. deals with dogs and through trucking, dogs yes. on the beach and through trucking. Well, all, things, the, all things the board asked to be done. Well, the, the, the extra road thing, I thought that was all going to be contracted out, Fred. He only did the first portion. His Who did? His bid. He only did you the first portion. You got the second half of all. Exeter right. Road to do. He's doing the second half. And you wanted He's him to, to dig in and do the camera. Here. I wanted. I want the whole thing to. I thought it was all part of the contract. Yeah. They haven't awarded that part of the contract yet. Oh. So you, what do you want? That he wants the equipment to do it himself because he has no. No, no. That, that's that's, that's a con con that is a contract. That's not it's a piece of equipment. Say, say that again. That, that the amount you're seeing on the list is a contract with an outside right. vendor. It's not a camera. He's not advocating to buy a camera. Yeah. He's you looking at contract. Look He's through. looking at contract the camera. Oh, this is a contract yes. here rather than the equipment yes. itself. Yes. It correct. doesn't say that. I'm sorry. Exeter Road sorry. Pipeline camera is is a project that's being contracted out to. That's what I thought. I thought you wanted to buy one. So you can look <laughs> no. at the crummy, crumbling well, sewer Well, that's lines. what my question was for all of you smart people. Yes. Okay. No, we don't want to buy it. <laughs> at any rate. Okay. Um, just a, a kind of a general question. Are some of these items budgeted in 2014? Uh, no. Okay. Just my only point is if, if these were budgeted items and we were going to Just buy wait. them out of, out of 2013, then there wasn't a need for them in the budget in 2014. Just, just wait and, and do them in, in 14 or, or, or just I'm not suggesting them. anything. I'm just saying is, yeah. is if we're pulling stuff yeah. from 14 forward, then no. you'd, I'm just making a general no. observation that you don't need it in the 14 My budget. My understanding is these are not budgeted in 14. Right. Okay. Um, I, I just make a general comment. Is, so basically, the, the, none of these, you, you're not rejecting any of these at this not point. Not rejecting any of them. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I, I just make another comment. If you look at the finance director's forecast, mm -hmm. yes. I don't know if anybody looked at that page. on, on yeah. But yeah. at any rate, what we've got in that is is we've got $151,000 in, in um, POs that were already on the books, not including the stuff that's on this list. There's right. 151,000 sitting there that's already open POs yes. in the report. Yeah. In addition to that, 
we've got these <laughs> items, which is roughly um, about $191,000, okay, mm -hmm. which are on top of that 151000 mm -hmm. okay? And if you look at the finance director's forecast, yes. and when you start making a forecast in December, mm -hmm. knowing what the November year-to-date actuals are, you're in a pretty Nothing good it's all, it's all place as, as far as being accurate forecast. There is still $414,000 based on Mike's forecast mm -hmm. um, that would go unspent. So I believe that what we've accomplished this year, unlike last year, is a very transparent yeah. process. We can see what's going on. Yeah. Even if we were to approve all of this, we still have four, 414000 or close to 2% of the budget. So I'm personally yeah. not, my objective is not to try and beat these down um, to the minimum required You've numbers. You've also already and applied the overlay to the tax. Right. Yeah. But my, my objective is not, and, and particularly where, mm -hmm. as over the last four or five years that I've, I've been involved with this, the budgets, quite frankly, by design, are getting tighter and tighter. We may be faced with a default budget next year, and and I think yeah. that I, I don't think we need to to um, squeeze things out of here unless w we think that there are expenditures that aren't necessary. And from what I know at this point, I've yeah. got to look further, but I don't see that. Sir, I don't see it either. I have one more point. We've still got six thousand four hundred and ten dollars in twenty twelve encumbrances open balance. It's the it's December of the following year. And I'm still unhappy ask, ask, why don't about you all the confounded encumbrances. Why don't you ask why don't you well, ask Mike? It's another whole year later. That's fine. I, I I think but that's you don't know what it is. Bring that up with Mike and let's find out what it is and why it's still there. I think you'll find out those are existing contracts that haven't been finished yet. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Still we all set on that line item. Yeah. Next one goes to Mark, repayment of agreement with SleepNet slash CDBG grant. Mark? Yeah, uh, last time we looked at this was, I believe, December 2nd. Mm -hmm. And the board has some questions that I've referred to the managing director of Coastal Economic Development Commission, Dan Gray. Uh, one of them was that on this uh, agreement, there was a repayment schedule yeah. that only went out so far at the time and the board, quite rightly so, wanted to see them mm -hmm. take that to the end of the schedule, which actually is in 2018. And uh, he has done so, and uh, showing all the stream of scheduled payments, and we've attached that to the original for yep. calling for the board's signature. Yep. Uh, other questions had to do with the town's, uh, how many people SleepNet employed at the time of the grant, which was 22, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Mr. Gray indicates that no job creation has been seen. However, he points out that one of the goals of the co of the community development block grant program was job retention, right. and no jobs have been lost. Right. Um, actually, one good thing is that uh, this is manufacturing in the United States, and mm -hmm. in particularly locally. And as we know, so, mu so much manufacturing has gone abroad. Right. Um, Another aspect had to do with what is the town's liability in case the uh, repayments are not made. And uh, this, this agreement, I believe, inserted some language to cover that eventuality in the, the town. Mm -hmm. The right. town is not liable. Right. right. I think that worked out very well, actually. Good. Yeah. Very well. Thank you, and good right. questions. Phil, you, uh, my, my one question relative to the balance showing up now as zero was answered. Have your questions been answered? I have no sir? questions, sir. Okay. Um, that being the case, was so, does somebody want to make a motion then on this? Yep, the motion would be to sign the agreement dated November 25, 2013, regarding the repayment by sleep net of funds received through the Community <coughs> Development Block Grant. I'll make that motion. I'll second, Mike. All in favor? Yeah. Unanimous. Thank I have you. one other item. Under uh, new business. Me, uh, oh, Mr. No. Chairman, I, I abstained on that. Huh? I, I'm oh, I'm sorry. On okay. that. Um, I have one other item on old business, and it, it's basically we received a, a memo. It's kind of a question, and I, I'm hoping Phil may be able to um, clarify a little bit. We see, re received a letter from Sue Irwin basically letting us know that she's resigning from the uh, Heritage Commission. Yes. And, and that I understand, that's fine. Sue, incidentally, was the uh, chair of the uh, Heritage Commission, at least in the 2012 report, and I assume still. But the, the question that I have is beyond one individual 
resigning. Um, Sue is is suggesting that there's not a uh, not a great deal of, of for us to do, and she's saying I would ask two things if we decide to eliminate the commission. So that there's really two things that are in this uh, letter. Letter, and and I understand one individual resigning and whatever, but the other one I I, I, I don't. Well, she did come in and talk to me, and she felt that the commission really doesn't have a purpose at this point in time. Uh, the only thing they were doing was uh, saying yes or no to demolition permits. Oh, yeah. The statute didn't allow them to say that. Yeah. And what was happening was that we were getting behind the eight ball. Yeah. Um, we were in some cases because it was difficult to get a meeting with the commission. Yeah. Uh, in some cases it was a month or two before they would yeah. sign a demolition permit. Yeah. And Ooh. things were, were backing up. And we did some research in the statute and we found out that they don't have the authority. Yeah. So what we did is we set up a system whereby any demolition permit that came in, they were getting all the information the same day it came in, the entire application, all the documentation behind it. But then they wanted us to uh, to manufacture uh, data and take pictures, interior and exterior of the buildings and all the other things, which we said, no, we really yeah. couldn't do. Uh, we don't really have any authority to do. Um, so they decided that... Uh, Sue decided that because it was difficult getting meetings, it was difficult getting a quorum, that she just couldn't take the amount of time to do it all herself mm -hmm. anymore. So she was resigning, but at the same time she mentioned it would be a good thing for the selectmen to consider abolishing the commission, yeah, well, which we would take a town meeting vote. Yeah, well, is, is there any statutory requirement to, to, to have a heritage commission? Uh, we did accept the statute to have a heritage commission. It's in the uh, uh, Title 46 under planning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the town did vote to have that. So do we, if, if that is going to be abolished, would that require a vote of the legislative body? Yes, sir, it would. Okay. Um, the committee. Yeah. What, what we have it, it is, is Sue's opinion. I mean, do you agree with that, and is that reflected by the committee overall, or is it we don't know because they haven't got together? We don't know. They haven't gotten together. I, I don't think Sue's brought it up to them, or if she has, she hasn't specifically addressed that to me. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe what we should do is we should ask the remaining members of the Heritage Commission what they would like to do. Okay. Can, can you send a letter to, yes, to that effect? Yes, delighted to do and, that. And How many people are on that commission? Uh, there's three, three, I believe. Oh, there's, well, in the 2012 annual, I looked at it just to see, it was, it's a longer list than three. Seven. Yeah. It is a long list, but I think there's only three that are active. Well, yeah, that could be her. that there was yeah. a list. Okay, so you will get that letter out to the yes, remaining sir, members and then give us some feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Be happy to do that. Okay. Um, consent agenda. Oh, I have one other thing under old business. I, it's after 10 o'clock. Well, <laughs> <huh>. <laughs> You can go to sleep anytime you want. Um, <laughs> I brought it up before. I brought it up before, and I have done uh, research. I still intend to bring a motion before this board to discontinue our membership in the Rockingham County Planning Commission. If you want an elaborate discussion and hear me orate on the uh, statute, I'm happy to do that. If you want to put that on a subsequent agenda, but I'd like to get us out of it so that we are not paying the dues for 20. Uh, 14. I'd, I'd like to hear what the, the planning board thinks about that. It's, it's on their well, agenda. But I. It's on their agenda for tomorrow night. Well, I think tomorrow. what the. Well. Uh, I'm not debating the statute. Yeah. I, I'm just I saying I'd like to hear what the planning board. Uh, I haven't read the statute yet. Doesn't the statute say well, you have to belong to one commission or another? And it's perfect. You know, we, we're one of 26 communities that belong to. The rocking to one of the planning commissions. Mary the Louise, can, can we get into the, this discussion them. when we put it on the agenda? As right, but I think we need to do this before Th that's the That's fine. End of the but, year. but what we said in last addition, I what don't. What we said last time is 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 we would bring that concern and bring it up with the planning board. I suspect you have because it is on their agenda. It is a listed right. agenda right. item. So well, I think we'll what's get on some the agenda is to appoint. No, or, no. Yeah, but, it, but the, we had a asked for a revote, or y you had mentioned the revote to, to appoint. In addition somebody. to the revote on the clarify. appointment of, uh, of, right. of Barbara Kravitz right. and um, different issue, but the same thing, secret yeah. ballot and mm -hmm. Carnaby, there is also mm -hmm. an issue mm -hmm. on their agenda related to the Rock Camp Planning mm -hmm. Commission. So um, 
we can see what kind of feedback we get from that and take it from there and in I'll, terms of I'll putting it on our agenda. After the meeting um, I have one other item which I overlooked, and it was actually in Warren articles, and it, it was a question for Fred. I don't see anything here on in terms of an encumbrance due with updating the code book. No, we're still looking for cost. We, we, oh. Okay, we, we've got to we've got to update that code book. Oh. We can't update it in house because we simply don't have the staff and personnel. Oh, no, that, that's, why I'm sure that, that's, that's why I'm saying the last cost we had was was uh, twenty six thousand dollars to update the book. The book. What, what you Actually. what you put in what it, you put in for last year was was I think fourteen thousand dollars in yeah. encumbrance. Okay, and that was only to update those items that are in there yeah. and not to add any new items that the town has right. enacted. That, that's fine, but you know, and and we're not going to solve this problem at ten minutes after ten. Oh, no. I just want everybody to be clear of why I keep bringing this up and why I see it as an issue. We do not have a source of information, whether it's a document on the website or whether it's a a hard copy code book, mm -hmm. where a resident, quite frankly, where a town employee, mm -hmm. um, where anybody yeah. can go oh. and, 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 and see the, the, the ordinances, laws, whatever you want to call it, and mm -hmm. policies of the town of Hampton. Yeah. That does not exist in that it has not been updated since 2011. Mm -hmm. So we're now going on being three years behind. Is there a possibility? With the part-time help that Mark has requested for his office, if he if if the work is going along in a relatively orderly fashion, if the person could be shared a little bit to try to do some I of the code, what, what, whatever Sorry. way we, we, we need to. Okay. Well, that actually, that that's one of the items that I would want to share that person with Fred mm -hmm. to get some things like that done. I think the chairman's point is valid in that right. there's so much that needs to be updated. Yeah. Once we get it updated, if there's somebody there to take care of it, we can then take care of it on a daily basis. Yep. But until we okay. get it updated, there's just too, I mean, that, we got that, a stack that's fine, this big. But th that's fine, but let's go through that stack and let's find the 10% the, the or the 25% that's the important stuff, okay, which, which are basically um, Warrant articles that passed in 2012, 2013, and now we're probably looking at 2014 that changed the ordinances or whatever, and have them updated. Let, let's look at 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 at, at policies um, that selectmen have voted that have changed um, the information in there. I I'm not sure that everything needs to be updated if the stack is this high, but to have something that's had absolutely no updates. Since 2011, I just see as a as a problem. Richard, if we have a moderate amount of money remaining in surplus at the end of the year, so that you're relatively comfortable, Mike is already forecasting four hundred thousand dollars. No, 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 no. What I'm trying to say is. If Fred could obtain a signed contract with a vendor, and he is familiar with the vendor that he was talking about last year, et cetera, then we could encumber the code update yes. into next year. Yes. Let's and do that. For the and and maybe about. it's not 100% right. percent I make a motion we do that. $26,000 number. Maybe it's a subset of that. I would leave it to Fred to determine what those priorities Figure are. Figure that but, out. But we just get the signed in contract so we can get an encumbrance. Right. But we, yeah, but we didn't have anything... I know on that. the list. Okay, we need to. I would say, worst case scenario, this code book and the associated version of it on the web. <laughs> it's just a digital version versus a hard copy. Needs to be up to date. Uh, we're all agreeing, Mr. Chairman. Within I'm 90 days. Made of the, I made the motion, and it's been seconded to go ahead and let I'm him pick the money out. Of within the 90 days of, of the 2014 ballot. And so get a contract all well. arranged by the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. And we'll take it out of the encumber the money out Correct. of this year's surplus. I'm voting. I, I'm voting too. I'm voting in favor of that. Okay. So who was the motion, and what was the motion? The motion was to take the money out of the surplus at the end of the year, out of the four hundred and fourteen thousand dollars, to have Fred go out and get a contract to get that thing up to date, and get a signed contract, Fred, Before the and, <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, I seconded by Mary Louise. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's, that's to be added to an existing line, by the way, in the budget. Yes. It, it can't, it has to be added to an existing line. Yeah. It can't yes. be added to any new lines. Right. There right. aren't any new lines. Right. That's so I assume you put it in the line. same line as you did last time around. That's correct. In, the, yeah. right. in your budget. Whatever. That's correct. <laughs> yeah. All in favor? 
Uh, we, we, a little discussion. We're talking, uh, we have a purchasing policy. It's 10 past 10. We're saying go get it. It borders at 14 at the last estimate. Now we're saying just get it, do it. Uh, it flies in the face of every standard we place on our department heads. It probably violates the purchasing policy. We need three bids. Need to be done properly, and this this is nonsense. I, I don't think you can, Fred. Can you explain why it's not practical to bid it out? Uh, there's only one vendor. Okay. Well, let, then let's let's find out exactly what we're doing. Richard's speaking to a standard of the salience. Let's talk about doing the whole thing. Let's be professional. Let's get a price, and let's do it. So, what would you like to to table like the motion and get an update from Fred? To update to update the code book from the last time it was updated. To present, mm -hmm. get a price, and let's do it in big professional grade. None of this so willy nilly. What you're essentially requesting is that the motion um, be tabled and that we get an update from Fred on this next week. Absolutely, with a price. Well, I'm exactly fine with that. that. That's fine. I'm fine with that. Okay. okay. Well, you need to do it before December 31st. Right. I know. Well, that's the problem. The money has to be encumbered uh, yes. in, the, in the public sphere before the first. Just and can't having, fall behind. And having, year. The, having the board do it. Uh, and in re response to Phil's issue is we're, t we're taking the matter in our own hands and we're dealing with it properly according to the purchasing policy. Okay. Consent agenda. First item. <coughs> Permit for use of town property, Ruth C. Stimson Park, Bassett Wedding, September 20th, 2014. Second item. Conservation Commission alternate appointment, Lorraine Matamore. Third item. Signing of the amended purchasing policy and procedures. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I second that. Seconded by Mike. All in favor? Unanimous. Well, Mayor Louise. Any closing here. comments? I would make a motion to go into a non-public session under RSA 91A colon 3 Roman numerals 2 small a and c. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Roll call vote required. All in favor? Four zero one. Yes, if you're not here, you're abstained, right? Yeah. Four zero zero. Huh? Four zero zero. You can't abstain unless you're here. Okay. <laughs> I would make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Four zero zero. <laughs> <laughs> Four zero zero. Is the signatures for the name?